Make sure to like and subscribe. Smash the like button. <laughs> I never say smash. I never ever say that. I don't got that level of cheese. You make a good six out of ten burger. I mean, the yeah, burgers yeah. that you made last night were yeah, yeah. Six not out the of best, 10. but you know what? You put on a good show. I don't understand the duel. I don't know why you have to have two. That's why you want duel. That's but, pretty good. But that's only a thousand psi. No, he's he's right. That's that's a freakish amount of water. Now, did you ever did you ever try Dream Maker though? I hated Dream Maker. I don't. You're on crack. It's the worst product I've ever used. I tried oh. 15 different ways putting it on. I put a lot on, put a little bit on, put a little spritz on, spray it on the towel, spray it on my anus. None of it worked. <laughs> Welcome from Boise, Idaho. Thank you. Mr. Anthony from the Rag so Company. Excited to be here. If be you're not uh, subscribed to the Rag Company YouTube channel, make sure you go do that right now. Stop the video, go subscribe, because we have some other content, some behind the scenes, be garage good. tours, stuff like mm -hmm. that. Uh, and so make sure you're subscribed to, the, uh, the, to their channel, uh, as well as mine if you're not subscribed. So, yeah. Anthony's special guest. I don't think I've ever done a special guest wash and talk. No, I feel privileged. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna kind of do the car together and just yeah. talk like we do. You know, when you get the two of us together, we usually don't shut up. So yeah. let's get into usually. it. Usually, okay. So, I've been talking to you about, so my plan is to come on, I talked to Jeff into, so Jeff's the owner of the rag company, um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I talked Jeff into letting me come, we're gonna come do this, the double, the duel. I don't understand the duel, I don't know why you have to have two. So one's great, right, two it's gallons one, a minute, it seems thousand fine. PSI, yeah. it is fine, you know, but <laughs> what's better than one? Two. Well, then why would you just get well, a, why you, would you you'll see, a bigger one? You'll see in a minute. Yeah, when you when you get the bigger one, there's, there's a couple of advantages to this. One, okay. um, we have redundancy. So okay. if you were, not for me so much, but if you were a pro, okay. uh, and uh, and you're you know doing two or three cars a day, and you need your pressure washer system to work, okay. uh, if something failed, the chances of both failing is pretty slim, unless you got some major power surge or something. So you have redundancy. It's like, so it's like a plane with two two propellers, right? Right, so you don't go down, right? So, <laughs> right. One engine, you can kind of land the thing. It's a little bit <laughs> lower stakes here, right? It's not a plane, it's a pressure washing system. Okay, okay, keep The other going. advantage is now when we put two of them together, we're getting up in flow and output. And so the one I have at OGHQ, that's 3.3 gallons a minute, okay. but it holds 3,000 PSI in the line. So when you release the trigger, or when, actually on that one, when the timer goes off, or every time you release the trigger and re-pull it, it gives you like a, you know, there's like a, there's a recoil. It's normal. Well, this oh. is only giving you a, like a thousand PSI of recoil instead of three. So it's just more ergonomic and it's 1500 bucks less. So oh, it's, it's less money to do this, 1200 bucks less to do a dual than yeah. it is to do the big. So I gain redundancy. I have less inrush pressure, which makes it a little bit more ergonomic. And I also get a gallon more per minute. So keep, can you do this with any pressure? I got two Karcher, oh no, I got one Karcher cube. No. But I could turn this into two Karcher cubes. No, because no? Um, we tested the, the cheap ones, their pressure switch can't handle it. Like we really shouldn't be doing this. Okay. Um, and so, um, you know, the pressure switch can't handle it. So it, it gets all out of sync and then it, it's like on off. Makes does, sense. It doesn't work. Makes sense. But we did test it. Okay. It would have been awesome. You spend like 150 bucks and get, you know, three gallons a minute. That'd be pretty sweet. That would be amazing. Yeah. So what I usually do is pull the sucker out here. It really is way nicer. I just bundle my kind of cable together, my, my hose, and I throw it in the corner every time. So this is, this is we're already off to a good start here, I think. <laughs> I like functionally excellent, Anthony, you know? Yeah. It makes it more comfortable experience. I like slightly janky, still kind of excellent, maybe not in his eyes, but, and somewhat functional, right? It and works. It's, it's what, 1 p.m., super, super sunny out. Uh, and so we're gonna wash in the garage, air conditioner's on. This um, is nice, 100%. Yeah. 100%. I, I, I agree <clears throat> that this is quite the setup here for washing in a yeah. peaceful environment. S still not ideal because, you know, I wanna build like a dedicated wash bay that's yeah. designed for this. Um, you know, we'll get a little bit of mist in here um, and you'll see when we, when we do the final rinse, it you know, takes a minute for the mist to kind of dissipate. Yeah. But uh, generally speaking, I prefer to wash indoors. I can, it's more comfortable, I'm not sweating. I'm You're, not trying to beat the sun. I don't have to get up super early, stay yeah. up super late. It just makes it easier. Well, do you remember the old house? The last time we were here, this was, yeah, the, the what's it called? The, the overhang, the car, car, not carport, what do you call that? Yeah, our outdoor wash the bay. The outdoor yeah. wash bay. Yeah. 
Which that was fine still. That was, that was comfortable. That was pretty good. This is better though. This is better. Yeah, yeah, because the outdoor wash bay, even for shooting, like, because it was hard to deal with uh, making videos because yeah. of the, the sun. Okay. So I always set this up, pull okay. it over here. This is my procedure. So I see what you, so it's, so it's interesting. This is what you've done that I wouldn't normally do. You've given yourself slack. Do you even know that you've done that? For the hose, right? Yeah, yeah. So you ran, you ran that line back there. He's put a lot of thought into this. I usually just get it caught on the tire and then and you go, and I just whip yeah. it a couple of times <laughs> and I then hit a few bumpers with it. I think we all do that, right? And then there's things I like to do. Like I like to fill up the rinse bucket first. Usually I would have done that. I got sidetracked talking to you, but I don't fill up the wash bucket. Okay. The reason I don't fill up the wash bucket is by the time I get done with my wheels, my suds are dead and then I got to reactivate them. It's okay. never as good. To me, reactivated suds are never as good as initial suds. Well, I agree, I agree with you. you know? I get that, yeah. So I'll grab my wash pads while that's filling up. What you need to have here, Good you need to have a regulator that knows exactly when I, to shut off. It's funny you have, you should say that because like I have that. Gallons. I, somebody had sent me once, hey, check this thing out. We have one and um, really? we're coming out with it real soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I didn't set I, them up for that. I thought I came up with that idea and I thought I was about to be rich, but I guess, you know. No, it's something that's, oh, it's already, it already exists. And you just set, you know, well, I'm gonna do five and a half gallons or whatever. Dang. It's in liters, so we'd have to do the conversion, but. Cause I, I like to think that I came up with some creative ideas, right? Especially at, yeah. at TRC. So being here, I'm trying to like kickstart my brain to think like how I do things different, how I do things better, right? Cause there's gotta be something I can do better than Matt. There has to be, I actually, probably several things I can do better than Matt. But I mean, in oh, yeah, this, there is, this for sure. field, I want to find things that I can say, hey, you missed this, or you didn't think of this, That's and try to like one that. up you, or try to maybe at least help you out with an idea. But right now, I'm not scared I, have, of that. I, haven't, I haven't struck home yet. So Anthony said, uh, so everybody's been asking me about reactivation shampoo, mm -hmm. and I was like, hey, we'll use reactivation shampoo. I don't want you to do that. <laughs> Anthony, I don't want you to throw it away. Anthony says no, so That's, I believe him. It's still, it's still a good product. I just don't think it's good for what we're doing today. So then I have no use for it. Okay. Somebody has a use for it, right? There's probably some guy washing down the street that would love that product. Now it's in the trash. It's fine. Okay, so what, are we using GFX or are we using GSF? GSF. Um, okay. GS, GFX is gone, you know, sold okay. out. You know, okay. not coming back. So GSF, 150 milliliters is what I put in, and then I'll go over to my rinse bucket, okay. and I'm gonna grab about, because this is a small car, so I don't need a full foam cannon. So I like to do about 750 total. So you know, I'll do 600 milliliters of water-ish. Okay. And uh, you could, I could probably dial back the amount of soap I use, but you know, I, I, I just, I'd rather err on the side of having good, good foam, you know? He's measuring. I don't even measure. I just, I, 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 just I, eyeball. I've been eyeballing that stuff for years and I, it hasn't filled me yet. You know what I mean? Two little, little extra soap here might take a little while to, to rinse off, but. Let know, me ask you this. Okay. Do you ever leave your excess soap in the foam cannon? No, I use like, it all. Okay. Use it or lose it. If you it. didn't use it all, then you lose it, right? And you, that's why well, you use what, it or lose it. Unless you're using deionized water, what'll happen is the soap attacks the mineral content of the yep. water and you try to refoam like two weeks from now, it'll it's be garbage. dead, yeah, it'll it's be trash. water. Yep, yep. Yeah. No, I agree, I agree right, with so that. We're, so we're set up there, I already have my wheel stuff ready to go. Okay. Um, we're ready to wash. Okay. You can just hang out while I do this. It's gonna, I'm gonna, critique, I'm gonna critique I'm gonna my skills. Do a little nitpicking, right? I like that. So yeah, the yeah. thing that he's already doing that I would do different yeah. You don't have any water. You don't have any water in your bucket. I don't like water in my bucket. I don't, it's too dirty for me. That's the. It's a wheel bucket. That's the whole point. Yeah. So you're gonna be oh, spraying oh, everything out constantly. Yeah, yeah. But it's a pressure washer. Um, it's not like I'm using a regular hose. How, what do you think about these guys? Is it cool or what? I do like those. So, Bradley, I mean Brad, I should say, did a killer job. Yeah, it's pretty sweet having that available, ready to go. But here, so you, perfect, you, perfect you, detail you USA. Your, you keep your brake buster in here. I do. Okay. Uh, full non diluted, strength. full strength. Because yeah, we're going to dilute when we, yeah. you know, we do it. I'm running the Grios from Canada full. And full, full strength. Because once you dilute it, I mean, it's fine diluted. I mean, you can keep it in, you know, yeah. Matt's favorite IK sprayers for like months and months on end, right? Never yeah. have any issues, right? Yeah. Especially the foaming sprayers that you love. But that's because it's heavy, heavy alkaline. The mineral content doesn't matter as much. Yeah. But if I were mixing and diluting, I would buy some distilled water. Yeah. You know, and mix that way, or at least use your deionizer and use DI water. Yeah. 
And I actually like to pre-rinse my wheels before putting okay. product on, get as much off as I can. Yeah. You know, that's a, you know, some, some schools of thought would say, well, I want to get the product on well, dry, but I don't think it matters Well, that I much. feel like I'm spraying it twice at that point, whereas like I yeah. rinse it, then I can spray my chemical, then agitate it, right? Yeah. And I'm not spraying it twice, but it puts on a better show yep. if you, like especially with like a fallout remover or something like that, if you go on just dry, dry yeah. and dirty. That's the wrong tip. That's a 25 degree. A shotgun blast to the wheel. Is it, it's not that loud, is it? No. no, 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 no. This would be like 70 decibels, you'll see. Okay. Because I'm doing 4.2 gallons a minute, I mean, we're moving some water here. That's why you want dual. That's but, pretty good. But that's only 1,000 PSI. It just makes everything more efficient versus a single crank. The single crank is nice. Yeah. That is it's, magical. It's hard to pick up on camera, right? That's a lot of water. I mean, it's, you can't really tell, but like in person, I can tell you guys, this is the first wash and talk with somebody else here. You know, I was ready to pick that apart, but that's a lot of water. Now this, that's, this is one thing that bothers me. Getting it on the paint? Yes. Ah, Absolutely. Okay. Why? I hate that. I, well, I don't, I don't, what, is, what is my other option? Just don't use, we don't have to use a foam can. Yeah, true, true, yeah. That's the byproduct of using a foam cannon is that you get that. I don't like that. Over. I don't like that at all. But the, here, here, different strokes are different folks, you know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. Okay, I so you. you're using the easy clean detail brush. Do you have anything on your shins to protect all the fling back? No, I'm just got, I'm just good at how to you know, manage it, manage it. Yeah. Go stay, there. stay to the side. Okay. And then I just kind of manage my pull, you know, as I pull it. Back I out. see. I know what you're saying, but these are, this is a relatively easy wheel to clean. So we'll start, we'll talk more about the Evo stuff here in a little bit, but I, yeah, obviously this is a car. I have, I have this car. Close to this car. Yeah. You have the same darn car. Yeah. We'll talk, we'll talk about that more once we get to the washing, I but I mean, a, I need to get you a seat somehow. I don't have, you don't have one. a secondary seat. I do. I do yeah. feel kind of yeah. crouched down, but I also don't want to be hit with the, with yeah. the wheel, with the wheel cleaner. I'll just, so, uh, just hang out. Anthony, could we, can we talk about this? You have something in the works for this maybe possibly to replace my lambskin mitt. Something, something. Yeah. So something Some, maybe coming, something. This, coming in the future. Something with, with less dye. I'll tell you that. So there's less dye in it. Yeah. And it's something that makes finding the, uh, the finger hole a little bit easier. Yeah. I like that. Because I think you pull out this, I don't even know what you, sheep ball, right? And you go, yeah. okay, where do, where do I, where do I start? How do I get this thing on my hand? And, uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're figuring, figuring something out in that realm of stuff. So soon, probably give me, give me like another month or so. See why I don't like the bucket? No, We've I don't got see instant on off on the pressure washer. I don't yeah. need a bucket to get all dirty and break dusty and all that crap. I just do it that way. I, I, oh. I, see, what, I see what you're saying. I don't no, know. I just feel, I feel weird just throwing it back into an empty bucket. Maybe because that's how yeah, maybe I, I, I was I get trained it. that way or taught that way, learned that way. And these wheels are coated. This is, um, yeah, wheels are coated with uh, uh, armor, armor wheel coating. Armor, okay. This is the uh, Dule or whatever. This is the, uh, this is from Brazil, from oh. Vonix. This what is it what do? I have in here. This is a. Uh, Tires? Uh oh, I lost my, uh, yeah. I don't have one Pressel bottle. I was I thinking I'd buy, buy, buy one here, but based on what I'm seeing right here, I don't, maybe, maybe. That's, that's not sometime. good. Sometime. <laughs> That's bad news right there. <laughs> this one's dead. What is, but what is it? What is the? You didn't tell me what the chemical was. This is it's this stuff here. Uh, Dalet. I don't know how you would Vonix? pronounce that in uh, Portuguese. Is it a it's Portuguese a brand? Mm -hmm. It's a wheel, a tire cleaner. I'm half Portuguese. Do you know that? Uh uh Yeah, I don't speak any Portuguese at all whatsoever but I am 50% Portuguese. So I'm interested in that. I'm, it very much interests me. Yeah. 
I think that was the sprayer. That was the bat. Oh, that was the sprayer that was dead from last week that I put on this bottle. Yeah, these were the two dead ones I had. Okay. Cut that part out. Just kidding. Keep it in. I'll take the press uh, all sprayers, right? I'll take the heat. See, this is why you know you can get premium IK sprayers, TR 1360s, available at theragcompany.com. The are you still the IK? You still are you still the IK sprayers, trigger sprayers at all still, or no? They're terrible. Terrible. They work. Uh, why do you think they I'm? Work. Uh, well, this works fine right here. I had one bad sprayer. You've never had a bad uh, IK sprayer ever. Never. Not once. Right. Ever. <laughs> ever. Never had one bad IK sprayer mm -hmm. in existence. Do I always tell the truth? Yeah, mostly. So Detail Factory Tire Brush. Yep. And I love that brush. I think it's a great brush, mm -hmm. especially if you're keeping up on everything. No, he's, he's right. That's, that's a freakish amount of water. That's a ton of water. Nice. But on the CR Spotless, though, how well, often? How often are you? How much? Well, how often, the CR can't keep up with this. So how often? Because I have a CR Spotless, right? Mm -hmm. I have a CR. Same thing, right? Yep. On the Dolly, I wish I wouldn't have got the Dolly version, but I yeah. got the Dolly version. So I got that, but I got my seven or whatever it is, my Karcher Cube. Yep. But I'm getting like, I feel like I got like a, I get like a year out of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. It but depends on, this, on your water. Depends on what your water's like at your house. Yeah. If you have crappy water, it'll rifle through it. So this. CR is not on. I can't. It can't keep up. But it can only do two. It can barely do two gallons. Can't keep up with pushing the water to the. Correct. Correct. To the so we'd be washer. pulling too much water, and it would regular water would just be getting past the filters, right? So okay. they can only really handle about two gallons a minute. Uh, so if I wanted to use the CR in this, which uh, that's why I have valves on there, I can turn okay. one of the pressure washers off, and then just use the single single Krenzel. So you have to so you have to think about this every single time you're doing this? No, cuz I, I really don't use uh, DI water very much cuz my water in the house is treated and oh. it's already like a TDS of maybe 50. Okay. So, um, I don't it's have pretty good. and yeah. and I don't I'm not gen I'm generally not doing a rinse and walk away. I'm going to dry the car yeah. almost always. It's good. It's good. So you don't use a foam cannon on the wheels? No. I, have a... I like it. I, I think it, no, I like it. It creates yeah. a splatter. I hate that. But yeah. so for a while I was using IK at home, right? In my, in my home time, mm -hmm. I'm using, I was usually using like an IK like, foam, like foam pump tube or something okay. like that. Yep. Pump yep. foam, right? Yep. I was for a while there. And then I became a dad. And then my, my wash time had to cut be cut in half, right? So I didn't have time to mix up something separate and do the foam thing and do all that. So now I'm just spray, just diluted Brake Buster, Green Star, or just Magic Wheel Cleaner Straight. And Magic Wheel Cleaner Straight has actually probably been one of my favorites lately, but the downside is that I lose my tire scrubbing ability mm. when, I, when I'm using Magic Wheel Cleaner because I don't clean tires very well. So that's when you either have to have the secondary or I, Use See, I don't brake buster for everything. But like with a uh, you know even this with a coated wheel, I probably could just use the regular soap, right? I just like how much slicker um, because of the alkalinity brake buster yeah. is uh, at doing a good job of you know making this lubricated because I'm using a pretty aggressive brush on my wheels. Yeah. The wheels I don't micromanage from a scratch perspective because you're not down there eyeballing it with a light or it's yeah. not out in the sun. Uh, but I, um, I don't like sodium thiglocolate wheel cleaners. I don't like that, that smell. smell. I don't find it necessary. Um, if I was going to do that, I would just hit it with a quick iron remover, you know, like yeah. iron buster I, or something like that. I don't know how I feel. Like, I feel like obviously there's in certain cleans and certain washes like that. It's, ne it's a necessity. Mm -hmm. I have to use it in certain things, but on the wheels always, Thing is, Magic Wheel Cleaner, oh man, it's, it's good. It's a spray on, almost rinse off mm -hmm. product in terms of cleaning, and I like that about it. Yeah, but but it's, do it's I a, like agitating or smelling it for long periods of time? No, not really. To me, it's very much like Sonax Full Effect, you know, very yeah. similar, which I, I used that for many years just because that was what we were supposed to use. You know, it's yeah. the best wheel cleaner. Well, I don't know. I, I, once I 
transition to brake buster, I just can't imagine something being better off. Better off. And I still like, I'm using this uh, Dillette just to yeah. test out, but I still think brake buster is the best maintenance tire cleaner. No, it is. On it the is. market. I, I would agree with that. I mean, if you had to pick one product just to, in terms of cost, yeah. effectiveness, what it's capable of doing, right? Yeah. I mean, well, because I don't want, I don't want to strip my tires. I just want to yeah. get the surface dirt and then continue to build my, my tire dressing, you know? Yeah. And so this is the pretty, these have gotten pretty dirty in comparison to what my tires normally get. Cause I did a lot of driving in the rain, yeah. you know, the last couple of last month or so, last couple of weeks. Plus my car sat, I've been gone for a month at Adam LZ's place. What are, so tell me a little bit about that then. So Adam LZ's car is pretty clean. Uh, well, you know, Trevor maintains them. Some of okay. them, you know, some of them are polished and coated. Most of them are not. Okay. Um, so no, not really. I mean, they're uh, like the, 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 the cars that we've done or he has done, you know, where they, where they actually corrected the non-drift cars are, are good. Yeah. Say, yeah, I'm gonna need a rinse after this. No, I, yeah, I, he, it looks like, cause when we went over and visited him and we, we did his cars up, he knows, he knows what a correct Well, he has freaking like. 60 of them, you know? Yeah. Can't have all, I mean, you could, I would have all of them, but. Yeah. Now he knows what a corrected car looks like. He knows what a, he knows what a well-maintained car looks like. But, you know, Trevor maintains the cars. Yeah. Um, Jeff will come in and help with, uh, you know, a new car if it needs to be polished. Ryan Burroughs, who does my PPF, does his PPF. So, you know, Billy does some of the cars too. Let me, give me that thing. Let me, let, me sh let me shoot it once. Let me see what this is like. Yeah, here, you want to do the wheel? Get it, yeah, get out of the way. Let me do this. You, you stand. I'll do it. Okay. Gladly. All right. I hate doing wheels. I don't know about you. So here, let me, let me get my mat on. Hold on. All right. So yeah, another another day here in Florida. So it's kind of hot out, but you know, got a lot going on. Is that am I on the right path? No, not even close. Okay. You got to uh, be talking about something uh, existential. Uh, you know, existential. Some, some um, like you know business proposition or okay. something. You've well, some I'm, epiphany you've had about the world or okay. yourself or yeah, some this. or other people okay. or a relationship. You know, something like that. Okay. That's what you got to come up uh, with. Okay. Uh, the other night I had this dream. I had like this vision. Mm -hmm. and but you have to be yeah. doing the work. Wow. Uh, okay. So you know, I I like this thing. This is. This is pretty nice. I just, you know, He's, I don't know. It's terrible, yeah, yeah. Someday, I don't know, figure out a solution package. I would never set that on the ground. Package. What? What do you pretty put it? I keep it in my hand. Okay. All right. So someday, figure out another solution package 17.3 for. Uh, now you're for, getting there. For, you're getting... for this 17.3, I think. And I'm going to set a goal at 20, 2020. 2029, I'll have Goals another, for losers. another revision and something like that. And, you know, and eventually, you know, Grios, you know, probably, you know, they'll probably have like a, 50, you know, gallon size thing of this. So I never have to freaking fill up the stupid thing again because I'm just tired of bending over because I'm getting old now. How's that sound? Yeah. Let's go back to our normal okay. comment. You don't, you don't have is that right? Because I got it on the on that. I prefer you not get it all over the hood and the roof and everywhere. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so now what? So this I can set it down now. I I detached the foam okay. cannon. Yeah. Okay. There's people probably watching this that have seen every single one of your wash and talks. They're like, Anthony's way off right now, right? I suspect no one has seen all of them. Okay, this one. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going through. I wonder how many wash and talks I actually have. I should go add it up. It's got to be at least 500. Probably. I guarantee you there's somebody out there that's seen every single one of them. I no guarantee way. You. No way. I, I, maybe Chris Haynes, that's it, who, who okay. works for me. This is nice, though. This, this, this cleans pretty much anything that you throw on there. Yeah. Okay. I think this is going pretty well so far. What do you think? Yeah. Now, what wheel coating are you using these days? So I'm using, I really like C5. 
Really? I hate C5. Why? Unless they changed it, it's terrible. I've had... It's, it's by I've far had, the worst wheel coating I've ever used. Not at all. It's one of the best. It's horrible. I've, I've had all it that. is is C1. Repurposed. You, you I think, so C5 has never let me down. I have diamond wheels on. There's from, zero hydrophobics. It's this? Either one's, yeah. Okay. That's, a and, one. that's, and, a one. okay. that's a brand new one. Okay. We're gonna fix this issue. Pulling this out. Yeah, yeah, it, because it's Where's actual. The, yeah, that's the one I've been Where's using. It, yeah. One. Okay, here we go. So we got this. So the. <clears throat> You're lefty? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I know. Yeah. I'm extra special. Yeah. So come in through here like this. How often so you back, do this? back to C5. Okay, back or to C5. G5 or whatever it is. Okay, C5. C5 wheel coating. So the thing yeah. is about C5 is it's never let me down. I think it's extremely easy to use. I like the finish that it leaves, even on matte and satin wheels. It doesn't change the visual look of it, which is important to me. I like that part of it. Um, and as far as the cost goes, because it's like it's like 40, 40 bucks? I don't care about that. Bucks? I just wanted to work. It does work. How are you applying it? Are you using panel 48 light? bucks, 32 bucks, 60 bucks, none of that matters when you're talking about coating a set of $3,000, $5,000 set of wheels. I just want to work. My wheels are like 600 bucks. And so Whatever. Like, Even still, it's still a small that. percentage of a $600 set of wheels. So, so, I don't know. But then the Diamond Pro Tech stuff, I think is pretty good as well. But as far as like long term, I've mm -hmm. had C5 last on my wheels for up to over two years. Really? I've had no issues with that. Now with G Technic, or sorry, with Diamond Pro Tech, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how long. I think I've done like three sets of wheels, three sets of wheels with C5. But it was all around the same time. It was all similar time frame. So you do gain some function and efficiency with moving that much water. You get a little overspray on you, but. Yeah, I'm um, getting a shower right now. I already took, this is my second shower there. I don't need, need another shower. It's yeah. ridiculous. My socks yeah. are gonna be wet. You know how much I hate wet socks? Yeah. I hate, it's my, it's, You'll be all right. You can change them when you It's get my content. demise. Okay, so what else? Is this it? Uh, you do the tire. Okay, tire. Yeah. Oh, shoot, I will. That's all right, just spray some spray delet, some. delet on there and. Okay. Here we hit go. It, hit it. I'll get, to, I'm gonna, I'll get the hang of your process here eventually. It just, this is, we all have our own ways of doing things, but yeah. this is a. I don't think there's a right or wrong way. It's about, I think the, the, the main benefit to, um, or you can really benefit from developing some sort of repeatable process that you don't have to think about. You can just kind of motor through. And then if you're willing to make some adjustments here and there, like if you show me something I don't know, I'm willing to try it and adjust it. Yeah, it's just, I think, so when I'm at home or when I'm at TRC and we're shooting videos, whatever we're doing, it is, the best way to describe it is that it's just slightly more scrappy, right? Like, because mm -hmm. when you have a ton of employees all using your stuff, right? So we have, how many employees that wash their own vehicles at TRC? We have like five or six of us, right? Yeah. That are taking on different projects or washing different things. Yeah. Everybody has their own process. I'm a little bit messier. Somebody like Gabe's a little bit cleaner. Then you have... I don't know, like Levi, right? Who literally is just like, he is, he is like the most like- Chill. Chill, yeah. like whatever. Just whatever hand, you got, I'll, hand, if you got hand, some- if you, Hand me that, I'll make it work. So he's the most chill, that, that good? I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, just okay. get, get my hood a little bit there. This is crazy how much water this puts out. It's insane. Yeah. But everybody has their own process. Keep so going, guess, keep going, keep rolling. I guess, what I guess what I'm trying to say is that, but what I mean is like we all have different ways of pro processes. And so things get kind of scattered. So when we go to start grabbing things or start, you know, where's like, where's but, this thing? Where's this bucket? We just kind of all. But there's an opportunity for somebody to create like an SOP and say, hey, this has to stay this way. And if you don't, there has to be some rep you know, reprimand. You're not like, wrong. And you're not wrong. But, here, but, you, but now you're making too many rules and I don't like. Too many not, not rules, just just simple a simple process. Like, yeah, hey, th this has to go get put away. If you want to take advantage of this, you know, of this this availability, then yeah. you better take care of it better than you take care of your own stuff. That's enough. I think that's enough. So, 
the cutting corners already. What's Second that? wheel, he's already cutting corners. Am I cutting corners already? Why? Why switch? Switch to this. If you ever have to say that's enough, that usually means it's not enough. Okay, I know. Okay, you're right because I would I would say that that's not enough for myself. But yeah. then I'm gonna get soap all over the whole half the car. Just do it right. There you go. That's no, See? that's I'm happy with that. Okay, good. But I like no, that. I guess what I guess now that's that's another cop out too. I'm happy. It should be this is correct. Yeah. That should be your initial thought. So no, it just so back at TRC, you know, we grab stuff that we need for the shoot. Things kind of change on the fly. And then also, too, we always try to offer people different perspectives on washing, right? Whether it's rinseless washing, sure. you know, soap and water washing, teaching different methods. You know, like uh, we shot at, you know, we were at Freddie's house and I shot a video on Matt Armstrong's RS6. And we basically just taught people, you know, how to do a rinseless wash, you mm -hmm. know, or re revisiting a rinseless wash on that kind of car with the multi towel method. And then we, I showed people what you would do to clean your wheels with that same bucket of rinseless wash that you would have left over, right? To essentially be the most, I don't know, economical and, you know, using what you already have. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we, we teach people a different process like that. So things are always changing at TRC and we're always trying to experiment with different ways. So as far as, you know, like, but you, you'll change your ways every what, couple, every year, a couple of years? Well, just whenever, whenever it makes sense. Well, what, so, I'm, what I'm hearing here, there's a but at the end of this. So there's an excuse in that, well, since we're doing that, we can be lazy and make a big giant mess and have it not great. I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't but. want, I don't know. I don't, I don't want, I don't want the guys back at work to be justified with what you're saying right now. Cause then they're going to come to me and say, Matt said that. See, you were right there with him. He so, even pointed out your flaws. Sounds like you're the problem. Is that what we're going here? Oh, I, so, okay. I thought you were the, I pictured you being like the hyper organized, very particular, um, I'm particular? very neat, neat and tidy, you know, like what's your desk look like? <laughs> Don't bring that into this. This is the last thing I wanted you to say. That is the last thing I wanted you I, to say. I, I thought you were different. I'm not like I'm not trying to put on here for the camera. Like I, I thought you were hyper organized. <laughs> I'm not. So I'm not. I'm not a mini mat, right? I'm not a mini mat. I'm not perfect, but I am. I am very. I have certain things that I'm very particular about. Whose right? desk is worse, yours or Levi's? Probably mine, actually. Well, how's that even possible? Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying, right? You're Mr. Particular. There's things, but I'm particular about certain things. It's not everything. Like my cars are immaculate, right? Inside, yeah, I know. And, I, would and, I would assume that. Inside right? and out. You could eat, you, you, I wouldn't want you to eat but, ever. But why wouldn't your car be a microcosm of the rest of your life? I don't know, actually. I don't know about that. Because my house is very clean. Like, do you, shower, do you shower every day, every, or you just kind of whenever you feel no, like it? Every single day. Okay. Every single day, I floss twice a day. Okay. I have a, do you have a tongue scraper? I do not, no. He doesn't have a, you don't have a tongue scraper? Yeah, but I only eat meat, so it's, I don't, I don't, you know, I'm cleaner than you. Matt, a t I can't even, I can't, a tongue scraper will change your life. Hmm. Change your life. You, you'll never go back. I'll, I'll try it. So, but like See, certain things to... like that, I'm very weird about. Like I have to scrape yeah. my tongue. I have to have floss my straight. I have to shower every day. Why don't you scrape day. the crust off your desk too while you're at it? Well, I don't know. I think maybe because, maybe because there's other areas of life that I'm so weird about and particular about that maybe mm. the desk is the one area where I go, yeah. ah, I can breathe. I can set stuff on here and I have to worry about certain things. Mm. You know what I mean? There could be, it could be that situation. But I don't know. What is your, what is your, uh, speaking of tongue scraper, what does your uh, tu tube of toothpaste look like? Is it like all caked up and gross? No, no. My tube of toothpaste is always, I use, I get the crest. It comes in a little plastic thing, mm. so it stays clean always. Yeah. So it's just a squeezable bottle. It's yeah. not the roll. It's not like you can't close the top by the no, end of it, no, you know, no, no, like, no, like my no. daughter's Kate's, you no. know. No, there's okay. certain things, there's certain things that I buy and I do hmm. on a daily basis, right? Because I think ahead and I don't want to be caught in situations like that or have to deal with it. So if I have to pay an extra dollar for toothpaste that doesn't get to that point where I'm using a tube, sure, sure. then I do that. You know what I mean? That's an interesting little point just pointing out, not to change the subject, but he, and notice Anthony sprays the product on the brush first. I like that. I might, I might take that. I so never do, you know why, you, do you know why I do that? Why? I do it because it, 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 it initiates the agitation and the foaming, the frothing of the product. Mm. I'd probably say 50% faster. I like that. So within my first second of passing, I'm ready to rock and roll. I've literally never even considered that or thought of that. That's cool. So 
fun fact, I, I thought of creating a product one time, because I help with a lot of product creation at TRC, of a brush. And I'll tell this because I don't think it'll ever come to fruition. Um, I thought of creating a brush one time that it would have a brush bristles on one side mm -hmm. and it would have a hole on the back of this right here, yeah. right? So what I would do is I would take my sprayer and I would load my bristles in the back mm -hmm. this way with a couple sprays so I have product in my bristles ready to go. Now, in theory, it sounds kind of cool, but it also sounds kind of gimmicky because why wouldn't you just turn your brush over and, and spray it like that? Plus, you also don't want to be spraying and shooting product out from the back of the bristles. But mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of always loading my brush, and that's how I've just always done things. Okay. Oh, good. Uh, I got to do the exhaust tip here. I forgot to coat this thing, so give me some, bring me some slack over here. Yeah, Watch the camera. Cool. For what it's worth, I am absolute, and my legs are soaking wet. It hasn't reached my socks yet, so I'm happy about that. Yeah, but you, you have to really, I mean, think, you know, manage the, it, 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 there's a, it's a little, it adds a little bit to your process because when you go from a normal pressure washer experience to like a lot of Yeah, you have to bring an extra pair of socks. <laughs> you have to bring my, an extra pair of shoes my, and socks, so it does my, add to the but process. But what I'm saying is my feet aren't wet, so, <laughs> you know, you just, but this is your first time using it, so I'm not blaming you. Speaking of socks, one of the biggest things people point out in all the videos, right? They go, does Anthony wear socks? Yeah, I wear socks. I wear no-show socks. It's like yeah. nobody's ever heard of no-show socks before. I see people would say, Matt, do you even wear socks? I wear socks every day. Yeah, but that's, that's a sign of our, our, you know, our age. Our age, yeah. Versus, No-show socks were a very cool thing. And now you got yeah. people that are Jimmy's age. Look at, look at Jimmy, right? Yep. You would get made fun of back in high school. If oh, you had, God, yeah, yeah, If yeah. you had socks sticking out of your shoes like that, you'd get made fun of. In fairness, our way of doing it is much more functional. It is. Yeah. It's something we can agree on that for sure. All right, so new, pro new part of my process, I'm interested in your take, okay. is a snow foaming, you know, a pre-rinsing, pre-washing. Okay. I've always been adamantly against it because of the, you know, the original snow foams were strippers. You just strip and ruin your, you know, coatings weren't as durable. Yep. I was waxing, sealing, you know, coatings looked, I, to me, in the beginning, original C quartz, A quartz, all that stuff looked really weird. Yeah, you know, yeah. it looked very candy-like, very yeah. synthetic looking. Oh, yeah. And so I was two or three years late into adopting coatings. You were, because you were using... Colonite, colonite. Powerlock Colonite. Oh, oh, and so um, I don't want to strip that off. Like I, when I got Gion Snow Foam, when I bought cool. some other Snow Foams, and all the Europeans, the, the Europeans think their dirt is dirtier than our dirt, they you do. know, which they, is nonsense. They say they're traffic films, specifically yeah, yeah, traffic films. Which film. is nonsense. Dirt is dirt. Dirt is dirt. Um, can we, now, can we agree on that? No. Levi, Levi's loving hearing that right now. He, he hates the words traffic film. Yeah. Hates it. Yeah. Well, you know, traffic film was uh, Scott, you know, yeah, Shady Scott, yeah, you know, yeah. so <laughs> who magically disappeared, right? <laughs> what do you know? I, I, have, uh, I have no comment on that, so I'm just going to... That's why I kept my mouth shut. I just wait, you know, eventually yeah. he'll just... Yeah. Disappear. Yeah. yeah. So um, they come back. Yeah. So the um, I wasn't I didn't like snow foams because I'm like, man, I, I got to start over. Yeah. And remember, Scott's whole thing was like, you have to get the traffic film off. So strip the surface and rewax every time, Ridiculous, which is yeah. stupid yeah. nonsense. Yeah. So and I did all this work to get the car looking the way it looks and to have a coating. And I want to I want to keep it there. Or yeah. I did. You know, Colin and I did wax. I don't want to strip the wax off. Yeah. Uh, and so my thought process was, I don't really want to do a pre-wash. First of all, most pre-washes don't work. I don't yep. do anything. Uh, and then most pre-washes, in order for it to work, it has to like attack the dirt. Yeah. But generally speaking, it also has to attack the surface of the paint. Mm -hmm. You know, attack the mm -hmm. wax, attacks the attacks the, the ceiling, attacks the trim, attacks everything. Right. Yeah. And so. Um, the concept of, or now Coach Kemi has one, what is their pre-wash call? I forget what they're... So they have, they have two. So technically you have active foam. Yeah, active right? foam. So active That's foam, what, which yeah. is going to be a pH of 9, mm -hmm. right? And then you're going to get into super foam, which has a pH of 12. 
And so you're getting, yeah. I believe, 12 off the top of my head. Now remember that, and this is what Pete Hamber talks about, not all pH is equal. So yeah, not correct. all alkalinity is equal. Correct. Depending on if they use caustic soda or you know yeah, what correct. what is the surfactant, what is the what is the chemical, what is the what is the product they're using to to increase the pH? You know, correct. what is the detergent? What is yeah. what is doing the work? Yeah. Uh, and so my thought process has been, or it's changed a bit, and that, okay, coatings are much more durable. Mm -hmm. The idea is they're chemical re resistant. Yep. Uh, secondly, um, products for pre-washing have improved. Yeah. And they've done testing. And so what have you, have you added it to your process? Have you been doing any, any pre-rinsing or pre-washing, especially winter time? So when we, several years ago, one of our first like European trips, right, we found out like how relevant like pre-washes were over on that side of the world, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody's doing that. it. Everybody it's, does it's common it. knowledge, everybody it's does that. Right. So they'll use the pre-wash, but then rinse off all the foam, rinse off all the lubrication, and then just go in with a normal bucket wash. I mean, mm -hmm. there's no soap on the surface. They're just, it's just water back on the surface sure. again. Yep. And then they go through and do that. And which is weird because we learned totally different. We learned that you add snow foam to add lubrication to reduce marring, reduce scratching, whatever else it might be, and just make the process more fun, right? right. And so but because a pH neutral soap isn't doing squat. It's not. No, it's not. It's not doing anything. So right. especially if you're using other than but, lubrication. Yes, especially if you're using nothing but like a pH neutral. So that was the thing. It's like we found out how relevant they were over there, and we go, oh, let's see if we can start incorporating. So we, me and Levi started playing with that back on the day with different soaps. But the problem was is that we had to essentially train the US market, not, not just us solely, but we had to train our audience to say, hey, here's the idea of now a pre-wash. You can do this and you can do this. Mm -hmm. And then people go, well, do I have to do that? Because people overthink it and they go, sure. so I have to pre-wash every single time. No, you don't have to pre-wash every single you time. That's point, ridiculous, right. Right? right? You could do it as needed, but people overthink because they see a certain part of the process. So then we said, okay, maybe we won't start using the pre-wash stuff all the time. And this was several years ago. Mm -hmm. So we just used normal pH balanced soap. We foamed it. We used the lubrication from the foam and yeah. agitated it. And we never had any problems. And if we had to pre-spray something, we would take an APC, spray the lowers of the car, a diluted APC, do yeah. things like that and yeah. use kind of common sense but it's it's different because now right we have good products we have good pre-washes we yeah, have things right. like Actifoam that smell like a freaking nightclub and you mm -hmm. spray it in here you turn on the disco lights you're having a dance party right but then you're also providing some good cleaning power that's starting to actually melt away actual dirt mm -hmm. and still is pretty safe for the vehicle all in all but again now all these years later with all these fancy pre-washes people go okay so the process is pre-wash this, this, this every single time. And I go, no, we're back to where we were three years ago of the whole discussion of mm -hmm. how to use pre-washes. So yeah. I still think that there is a lot of confusion on how to properly use a pre-wash. So how we've trained people is every three months, throw a nice pre-wash in here if you feel like it's necessary, right? Use a deconning, more high pH soap mm -hmm. for extra cleaning power. But in Idaho during the winter times, I would say, yeah, Every probably, time, yeah, every, probably, in the winter, yeah. Every time, because you're only washing, realistically, unless you have a setup like this, mm -hmm. you're washing your car in some outdoor spray and pay, or you're doing it in the front of your house with a very mm -hmm. minimal time before either water freezes yeah. or before it's just not fun to do. Yeah. So sun, sun even in the winter, sun can be annoying with water yeah, spots and yep, stuff. Yep, absolutely. So that's why you're only using a pre-wash so, in the winter time, maybe a couple a handful of times. So for me, because the coating is so durable, because well, I'm using built hammer touchless here, because the formula is not destroying the surface, and because I've had some modicum of success in life and it cost me like a dollar to do this, yeah. uh, I've done it most of the time. Unless yeah. I'm trying to do, it quick, do something quick, yeah. just get it, get it over, get it done, um, I'm doing pre-wash probably 90% of the time now. Is what, and, is what and, I'm doing. and you like and you like it. Yeah, I do. Um, and I'm doing the double foaming part. So you're now, still so we're still foaming again. For so I'm going to foam dry okay. with pre-wash. So I'm not going to pre-rinse the car. Okay. Uh, and then really what I look at it as my first rinse is with soap, you know, with 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 the detergent or whatever the whatever's in this. this I see. Voodoo no, science. I see no downside to that. I see no downside to that unless we were in direct sunlight or had even had a glimpse of sunlight because yeah. Higher pH, sunlight, water summertime, spawning. Yeah, yeah, not etching, water spawning, yeah. even it's just soap staining, right? And I don't, because I, I, I hate soap yeah. staining. I think it yeah. sucks. And so I've had that happen before. And so, and I think the bright environment, what you're doing. Is yeah, fine. well, because, yeah, you're right. If the, if the 
paint was hot, yeah. you know, uh, I want to yeah. cool it down before yep. I put anything on yep. it. But right now, if I'm less technically, now it's minimal, but if technically I'm less diluted. You're, le you're less diluted. I'm no able to manage my panel impact ratio, the percentage of the product that's yep. on the surface, what the dilution ratio is via yep. just my, my knowing what my pressure washer does. Yep. Uh, and so the way that I, according to my calculations with this 4.2 gallons a minute, I'm going to get like a three and a half percent panel impact ratio. That's what, um, that's what built Hamburg calls for up to 4%. Uh, okay. Their new formula is coming out. Oh, I'll be doing is using it probably 1%. So okay. what I'll most likely be doing is, uh, to, to, I guess not to combat, but to think about it a little differently, what you're talking about, do it when you need to versus doing it all the time. I'm gonna do it all the time and I'm gonna adjust my dilution depending on how dirty I think the car is. Correct. So but, I may do a, I'm gonna do a lower dilution ratio if, yeah. if the car is clean. Right now, this is about as dirty as my car gets, ever. Yeah, yeah, and I, which, for what it's worth, people watching say he doesn't wash dirty car. Is it dirty? I would say it's dirty. Sure. I think this is rinseless wash dirty, but it's not quick detailer dirty. Um, yeah, and this right. is kind of still, I'm like, we're, we're doing a full wash, debatable, however you right. like to do it. But this is like my rinseless wash territory. So what I would say though, is that the process here, we're going through two steps of foaming. We're using two different products, right? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we're still using GSF, right? This is Correct. where I would probably say if, I was trying to appease somebody like you, right, and say, mm -hmm. I don't know why I said that, somebody like you, somebody like this guy right here. Somebody with a clean desk. Somebody, yeah, yeah with a clean desk, those freaks, the clean desks, <laughs> yeah. right? Clean desk and clean teeth, not, both are clean, there's not, not one, one or the other. There's yeah. not one wrapper or like four F empty coffee mugs in sight. So what I would do is I would use GSF and I would do the splash of Green Star. Mm. inside the GSF because a splash of Green Star is still going to be safe on the surface. It's still going to be di diluted form. It's going to add a little more alkalinity to the soap and it's still going to be lesser than that of something like active foam, depending on how much Green Star you put in, mm. and still going to have all the lubrication, all the suds, and all the smell of the experience, you know, having the full experience. Here's what I don't like about that versus this. Pete Hamber is a scientist and he formulated this for me. I'm a scientist You're, in my garage. You know, versus you just kind of guessing and hoping, you know, with a little bit of testing. There's That's, some success that, there. I mean, uh, I'm yeah. not saying there isn't, but yeah. I'm just saying that I, I, I'm not willing to go through what needs to be gone through to make okay. that decision. And so I'm copping out here and say, hey, yeah. I'm listening to this guy. No, and he, I, may be, he may be a kook, I don't know. But based I, on my snap judgment of humans, you know, that's, that's how I made that decision. I've met quite a few scientists over on that side of the pond, and I will say that they're, they're, they're smart. They know their stuff. They yep. do know their stuff. But a lot of them, they are definitely more on the science world of things than the detailing world, if that makes sense. The real world, yeah. Let's get this on the car. It doesn't smell particularly good. Yeah, there's no, I don't think there is a scent. I think, I think this scent. is think just, just what the, it smells it's the, like. It's just the chemical, yeah. yeah. So now if we were using active foam or super foam, Oh, they're, scent, they're adding scent. They are. So you're not hitting the wheels again. Nah, it'll be pointless because the wheels are clean. I know, yeah. but the thing is, is me, I would probably hit the wheels again for no other reason than just having a nice universal looking thing. So when I take pictures, specifically for pictures, you know, for the Instagram detailers, that mm -hmm. it looks the best. Do you know what I mean? Who has more followers on Instagram? Maybe my way is better. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Throw me into the bus. Here. I'm going to combine multiple I'm accounts. Kidding. I'm, and I'm kidding. Will, I'm I'll kidding. I'll crush you with that, but it's okay. I'm kidding. All right. So, um, so then I let this sit for let five sit? minutes or five minutes. Five minutes? Mm-hmm, yeah. But in this, well, I guess in this environment, yeah. Yeah, what's it, what's it gonna hurt? It's doing its job, it's doing the work. Okay. It's attacking, it's attacking not the coating, but it's attacking the surface level dirt. Okay, and so people that you've converted to, because you sell this product, right? Not yet, but I will, yeah, will be, yeah. So. You will be buying it too. Right. We'll see. It's the best pre-wash, pre I, I pretty much guarantee you that. 
Okay, we'll see. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. We'll see how it looks after you rinse it. But in in theory, right? Based on this level of dirt here, this pre-wash is probably knocking off a ton of stuff here. Mm -hmm. So you could, in theory, rinse the car, probably grab a drying towel, grab some type of waterless wash, go through and wash everything up, and yeah. probably cut your wash time and everything in half. Yeah, but you, but you wouldn't. But you wouldn't. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I just don't like the the the. Um, the the dirtiness of dealing with uh, waterless wash, you know, I just don't yeah. like dealing with it and having to deal with multiple towels and all of that. Well, why I just not? I just like a couple of buckets and a, you know and soap. So that that's preference. I mean, that I, I'm not disagreeing and saying yeah. what you're talking about doesn't work. It's just per just pure opinion preference, right? Listen, I'm trying to sell some towels <clears throat> right now to a bunch of people watching this video, right? <laughs> you need you definitely need you need so many towels that it's insane. Whether you're buying them from Matt or from us, you need a cabinet full. I mean, full of towels. I've already got you covered there. We got the towel with 20 of each towel right here. Boom. Everyone they need. I know. I know this one. By the Matt Mormon packs like six hundred dollars or some crazy amount of money to get like because good and to it's, get it's, all the and, towels and it's needed and you're using premium microfiber, you know, mm -hmm. highest blend, grade AA. And uh, then and then th then based on my experience and my process, then I've chosen towels from your lineup yeah. that fit a certain purpose. Not to say that every one of those towels couldn't all do the same purpose. Yeah. Some are a little better suited than others for certain app, you know, certain applications. And I think eventually we'll get you down to, not, not necessarily do a revision, but show you what's new, mm. see if you like certain yeah. things, because it's been a few years. I mean, yeah, I'm happened. coming out this summer, and so that would be the plan. Maybe it's microfiber, I think it would be microfiber 4.0, or maybe it'd be 3.1, depending on. <laughs> Um, how much of a revision it is. We'll see. How do you right. do this? How do you do this point system? What is this? Is the point system BS or do you, do you actually have like an actual in your head of like whether it's a point one or it jumps to a new higher point? A new no, there's no like, I don't have like a jump off point for that. It's just, it depends on how it feels, you know. Does it feel like I made a, a complete sweeping change okay. or did I just make an adjustment? Actually, that's the first time I've had an explanation of that that makes a lot of sense to me. So, but it's subjective, you know, just like yeah, most yeah. things in life, you know? Yeah. Okay. Let's rinse this thing. So now when I rinse a pre-wash, I like to rinse bottom up. Bottom up. It's a bunch yeah. of nonsense, but you know, it yeah. just, I, I want to keep the product on the car as much as I can. And uh, I don't know, it just seems like a good idea to wash okay. bottom up. Now, when you're washing in, in the garage too, like the other thing you have to keep in mind, like I'm not going to just hit the car, I'm going to, try to stay at a you know, 45 or more aggressive angle so I'm not spraying all over my cabinets and stuff. Okay. So that is a piece of advice for anybody washing your car in your garage, you do adjust a little bit. Okay. And that here I'll go at a, at a 90, but when I go up top, you know, rather than like this, where I'm hitting all the walls and stuff, I can manage it a little bit better okay. by choosing the angle of my lamp. Then I effectively get multiple, if I go bottom up and then back down to finish the rinse, I get a little bit more, you know, activation, if you will, of okay. the product. And we're at, we're at CSL and XO or just CSL? CSL XO V4, okay. or V5, sorry, V5. V5, yeah. And then OG drying aid as a maintenance topper. You know, okay. Which is you a- know, You know I've never used the OG drying aid? No, oh, you'll like it, we'll, we'll do, use it today. Right. Give you guys my review. Tell you what, it is hard to go from boom pole to no boom pole in life. It, yeah. was, a, it was a rough couple of months to, until I had to get used to it again. So I'm not, you know, with any pre water I'm not worried about micromanaging. I'm yeah. about to spray yeah. it again no. with some yeah. soap. No, it doesn't have to be perfect. No, I get you. Same stuff, same thing that we would do back, back at TRC. You know, anything that's left over is left over. Yeah. But I mean, I can see I mean, I can see, so basically, you know how there's certain foams, right? Like GSF kind of does this, where there's like a, kind of like a dual layer activity. I don't know what it's called, but you know how you'll go rinse that top layer of foam off and you see the actual like refined bubbles underneath continuing to work? Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen that? Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing a little bit of that on here. So obviously, yeah, I mean, this is what, that's what it's This job product is to do. doesn't need to foam. Okay. The foam does nothing. Foam so, just adds air, so, it, it so just, I'm just foaming because it, it's fun. It's sold as a foaming product or not a foaming product? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's called, I mean, the one's called auto foam and then touchless, but 
but you could put it on with just a pump sprayer, you know, or a, or a hand sprayer. But we're either. diluting it. But you, you have it full strength inside that. Right. So you need to choose either pre-choose your dilution in a pump, in a hand sprayer or a pump sprayer, or you know, pre-choose or learn what yeah. the dilution is coming out of the foam cannon when we're adding okay. water and, and aeration. So this would be like us, you know, foaming green star, right? Whether you know, we don't need to, but we're doing yeah. it anyways. Correct. Okay. It just stick to the paint a little longer. Yeah. You know? And so the okay. car's pretty clean. You know, if I were to. This is uh, so. This is. So this is what I'm saying. I mean, it's it's pretty legit. This is what I'm saying. I, you know what I mean about the waterless wash thing. You wouldn't do it, right? Mm -hmm. But you could, in just, theory, just, water just go straight waterless wash. And dry I'm it. washing and drying at the same time, basically. Yeah, yeah. 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 you yeah. could do this, but. Um, but no, you could always. You could, my argument. You can always waterless wash anytime, no matter how dirty the car is. Yeah. But then it's nasty. Yeah. You know, if you're like a salted up, you know, really dirty car, and you're. You know, try to waterless wash your wheel wells and crap. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be waterless no. washing my wheels and just yeah. you're gonna use really 45 towels. You're gonna to be all dirty. I guess you could put gloves on and stuff. But but I would probably do that if I wasn't in Florida. You know, I would I would yeah. absolutely be waterless washing more often. Well, it's it's what I would be wa I would be waterless washing more often if I did live in Florida. Oh no 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 no. No, I would seriously. So. I mean, but your like, jams are never as clean. I think to me, waterless washing takes me twice as long if I do an equal clean. Okay. I gotta open all the doors, all the jams. I gotta be cleaning the wheel wells out with extra towels. I'll be doing all this extra work, and sure. I'm never getting my my brake rotors and dust shields cleaned out. You know, I'm missing so much stuff. Every once in a while, that's fine. But yes, okay. but, but if I were to just waterless wash all the time, my car is not as clean as if I did it this way. Okay. So. When I say when I say waterless, you are you on the same page I'm as me rinseless. as rinseless? Yeah. Okay. Same so thing, right. I was saying before, waterless, like straight up using something with a with a with a, basically a higher strength cleaner, kind of all in one. Right, right. Gotcha, like that gotcha. would be fine. In but, a spray bottle. But right. In a spray bottle. But rinseless. Oh my gosh, man. I'm a I'm a I'm, a, I'm a, like a rinseless fiend. But also, I get I, saying, I, yeah, I, I live in. I was thinking rinseless. I live in high high desert right in idaho essentially mm -hmm. and so we don't get the muck we don't get the algae that comes from these trees we don't get the pollen necessarily as bad yeah. so there's certain things that you know i'm able to do living there here i would rinse this as much as i could it, depending on what we've seen here the weather seems pretty the dicey part about nice. here with rinseless we have to take extra care is sand you know, and so okay, you do need that. to really use extra product, you know, use extra, make sure it's really encapsulated yeah. and zero pressure, flipping towels often, you know, same thing if you're in like Arizona, areas where there's a lot of sand that becomes, yeah. you know, lodged in the surface. That's why doing this pre-wash watered version is so much, so, you know, it's, 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 I wouldn't say it's safer, it just requires less particularness, yeah. you know, yeah. if, yeah. if you will. Yeah, that's true. Sure, I did that for you. Need some uniformity for you, Anthony. Now we get your fun back with the scent. I know. I love this smell. This was this was when I first like I knew it was love when I when I opened this thing up. And, and smelled it, and I couldn't quite figure it out. Because I'm weird about scents, right? Like, I like things that smell good. I like fancy this. colognes, I like fancy smelling detailing products, and then you're gonna dump that in the bucket. Yeah, this goes in okay. here. Gives but me a little. GSF, it's technically, it's, it's a cherry scent, right? Is what they call it. They yep. call it a unique, un, specifically, unique cherry fragrance is what they call it. But to me, I think this smells like fruit stripes. Do you know, like, remember the zebra gum? Yeah. This the gum that lasts about 10 seconds if it runs out of flavor. I, know I chew the whole pack. You know, the star that burns brightest, what's it burns out the fastest? Yeah. Something like that, Dane, yeah. right? Something, yeah. Yeah, whatever it is. But I mean, that gum is amazing, right? And this is what it reminds me of. And so it brings me back to my childhood. Something like that. So here we go. We got a bucket. Do you have a bucket filler at your house? No. So how do you fill your buckets up? You got to pre-fill them before you get your pressure washer set up? Take them into my, into my bathroom and fill them up with the bathtub. Mm, yeah. It's quick. That's it's quick. annoying, yeah. It's quick and fast. Is it annoying? It's annoying, yeah. But I mean, yeah. I, it gets the job done. 
I do love, I'm, I'm, you're motivating me to get this done because how many times have I overfilled this bucket like half the time where you're yeah. like, oh, I'm gonna come back and you go over there and then you hear the water spraying out all over the floor. Yeah. Is this the one that has like a quarter turn and it, and it opens up or do you have to? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that is nice. So, so Gabe, prior P166, I believe. So Gabe at work, he has something, I think he has this exact hose, I think he bought it from you. And I get it. It, it is nice. I get it 100%. Um, it just, so this water that comes to the house, you said it's treated, is it? Treated yeah, it's just like, softened. You know, soft, softened. Soft yeah. water. Yeah. Soft water. Yeah, correct. So I just got a, I just got a soft water softener in my house. I felt, so, like, I felt like an adult. You know, soft water will not be spot free, but yeah. less harshness, you know, it's yeah. pulling, you know. Well, technically, you know, technically it has more minerals in it because it's in introducing salt, right? Or it's no. introducing the brine. It is, it is. Mm -mm. Technically it is. Mm -mm. It will. It doesn't introduce salt. It uses salt it uses... to refresh the resin. Okay, so or refresh it uses the, uh, the, the media, not but resin. But I think if you were to test it, I think technically, I think it doesn't affect the, the PPM or the TDS like. Correct. It doesn't affect, like the number will still stay the same. Do you have two of these things? Oh, you yep. do have two of them. One for each of us. Okay, sweet. Okay, we're starting at the top of this side. Yep. All right, I want to talk about this car now because I know there's people that are probably want to know about this car. So, six months ago, right? Yep. You called me. I was leaving a concert with Dane. We were sitting in a parking lot after we got, I think we got Jack in the Box or something like that. We were sitting there. Okay. And you called me and you said, hey, I'm thinking of doing something, something kind of crazy. Yep. And so you told me about this car. Yep. You asked me about it, asked me what I thought. I said, you should probably do it. Well, I, I said, hey, I'm looking at Evos and in normal Matt Mormon fashion, I'm supposed to be buying a beater, yeah. like a, I'm looking for like a 30,000 mile car for 40 grand or you know whatever they go for. Yeah. And I found one that had 1,700 miles on it. Yeah. And I said, uh, what do you think about Evo for me? And you said. I said, I said, I think, I said, I said, I think you'll like it, but I also think that you'll think it's kind of janky. Yeah. And I am said, uh, there's part of me thinks that you're gonna get in it and hate it after the first drive, but the other part of me knows that you we're a Honda Civic guy, knows that you might actually kind of like it. Yeah, yeah. So. And that's, even to this day, that's pretty accurate. So, because, you know, we all, you know, I, I'm, I'm a Honda guy. I love the, the Civic project and, and all that. And so now here we are today with this car, which is essentially one, one year older, but 70 something thousand miles less on this, so it's very strange for me to be washing essentially my car, but a, but a newer version of my car. A newer, older version. A newer, <laughs> older version of my car. And so... A fresher, older version, yeah, right. I you mean, know, and I was just looking at it like, look, I'm gonna spend 50 to get a really clean, like as clean of examples I can get, or I can spend 25 grand more and yeah. get to relive basically the brand new experience that I didn't get to live. Well, no, I mean, I, I don't think, I mean, I think there's people that did get to live that experience. I think there's a lot of people that probably have seen your videos that may have regretted selling it or whatever it is, because the general rule is that you don't, you don't sell your Evo, because if you sell your Evo, you're going to regret it, because chances are you're not going to find a cleaner one, because time's passing and people are getting their hands on them that are running them, you know, running them hard, running them, what, what is it, what's the thing? They run them wet and then put them away dry. <laughs> So whatever that, whatever the heck that saying is, that's it's, yeah. it's just they're 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 they mistreat them, right? And they are becoming less clean examples that exist in the world. So people are trying to hold on to these things because there's also, you know, the wonder of if these are going to be as valued as high as some of the, you know, USDM JDM legends like the Supras of the world and all of that. You know, RX7s, GTRs, yeah, yeah, GTRs, yeah. So, I don't know, I, it, is, it is pretty surreal though, washing this, because this is like washing a freaking brand new car. And yeah. Yeah. all the seals, I don't think you guys don't realize. I'm, a, I'm weird about like trim and like seals and like the things that get wear and tear over years that you really can't do much about. And then seeing everything on here and it's just new. It's just brand new. It's like right, yeah, right, it's, out, it's, of, it's right out of the factory. It's freaking weird and so, but you know, the thing is though, Matt, is that the, the paint's mismatched. It had to have been resprayed, right? <laughs> <laughs> Tell the people about that so that I'm not so, a crazy person. I think that first night we had the conversation, 
You I, told me before, he said you better prepare yourself for the comments. I said prepare yourself for the graphite gray because that color is gonna look like 50 different colors, um, 50 different colors depending on how you look at it. And, and you said, ah, whatever, right? And I don't think you, you, you don't even think you realize what I kind of meant until you probably saw it for yourself. But if you look on the side of the car, depending on the angle of which you look at it, the flop of the metallic could look totally different. Right? You could look at the fender to the door and you go, that doesn't match. You could look at the rear quarter to the bumper, that doesn't match. And it's because there's so many different angles of these cars and this color is so strange. It just, it, it generally appears like that. The metallic but, uh, reflects differently. Yeah, correct. And so like the front, like, see how the front fender's flared out. Yes. The, you know, that you're getting a different angle. Yep. And so that second, that, that secondary angle makes it look as though no, and the car has been repainted or yeah. doesn't match or yeah. whatever. No, my now the rear bumper has been, because the rear bumper's aftermarket, but yeah. I have the factory bumper in my storage unit. Yeah. I already did, I did all you that. already did that? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. But no, it's, yeah, it's one of those things, it's, it's, it is what it is, and at the end of the day, it's a, it's a Mitsubishi, right? And so you just gotta kind of accept certain things, but I knew immediately after he bought that, that he was buying this, I had to kind of warn him. And then seeing all the comments is hilarious because it's just people that don't, they don't know, they don't know Evos. And so if you know Evos, then you understand. So, um, but no, this thing is, this thing's sweet. This thing is absolutely, it's mint. Yeah, and I, I've, I've been holding off, so I have the, the remaining like modifications to do. I'm gonna do tail, headlights and tail lights. I'm yep. gonna do a stereo. Uh, but I have the suspension, I have the wheels, I have the turbo, I have injectors. I've been just kind of waiting to, yeah, you know, totally to do all that stuff. Whenever I have time and I'm comfortable and, yeah. Getting the, uh, the Evo 7 tails, the JDM headlights, Yep. Um, make a big difference. Um, coils will help. The wheels, will, you know, the wheels will obviously help. But what's nice is that it just again, these cars don't need a lot to look to look special. But there's a lot of people that did them did them dirty back in the day by throwing just god awful kits on them, painting yeah. them crazy colors, yeah. doing weird stuff. Where I go, dude. You, you're telling me you bought this brand new and you thought this needed to be changed? So I go, you guys are Making crazy. Making them really big horsepower and just uncomfortable, undrivable messes. Yeah. You know, always problems, always yeah. holes in the fuel map and all kinds of bull crap that I'm not gonna do. Yeah, no, I, gonna... I agree. So you guys go and you wash all types of people's cars yeah. all the time, yeah. right? And um, I'm, you know, I'm the detail guy uh, and you've washed a lot of detailers' cars. Mm -hmm. uh, is my car what I say it is? No, it is. Yeah. It is. It is. No, try, I mean, uh, for real talk, I mean, there's certain people out there that are, you know, they're detailers, they claim, you know, they might be online, they might say they're meticulous or, you know, they, they take all the care in the world, but then you see it in person, you go, what? Like, this isn't, <laughs> this isn't up to the standard that we, you thought it was, right? Right. And so I will say that this thing is, is pretty meticulous. I mean, for uh, somebody that, you know, like you, you eat in your cars all the time, right? I'd say the interior is pretty nice too, right? Yeah. Now you'll <laughs> see um, when you do my when you do my E36, uh, they're gonna do a fun video of the E36, so that's why you should be subscribed to the to the Red Company channel. Um, my E36 is ready for a for a refresh. You know, there will yeah. be a few little water spots and stuff on it, and that happens to all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and shoot, you're here, and all four of my cars are dirty. The two trucks are dirty. Lucky, lucky me, right? You know yeah. that's but that's part of part of life but in general like when we open up the doors and the jams and like and the, and the paint condition and the level of polish and the trim and all that stuff you know most I found that most people profess to be particular yeah and then they have a desk like yours and I lose all faith in the humanity don't judge me by my desk don't judge me by the desk I thought the reason why I had him on this washing talk I thought we were equals and now I know that, gee whiz, oh my Don't gosh. show them that, Come throw that, put that, put that away. How's your wiring look? Is your wiring all jumbled or is it? So no, I, I recently, I, my desk wiring is, it's getting all somewhere. Right, let me wash. A couple of zip ties. 
My favorite part of GSF is its rinseability. It doesn't reactivate like a lot of other soaps no. do. That's the, the best part of GSF. It rinses really well. It doesn't reactivate it, but it hangs on. So it doesn't, because a lot of soaps that don't reactivate, they dissipate really quickly. So I can get through pretty much the whole wash, you know, where it's, you know, it, it's still, you know, foamy, with hold, what, holds its air, holds its aeration better. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like when you go to rinse it, you'll rinse kind of like that top layer, or some water will hit it, but right. there's still some of that kind of resting on there that kind of continues to, to work, even if you wanted to rinse one area at a time. I've used some foamier soaps that foam up and they aerate more. Yeah. You get the big, thick shaving cream-like yep. foam. Yep. Um, but the, the, the point of that, it doesn't really, it's kind of pointless to me. And then a lot of those soaps, they'll, they'll reactivate. So as soon as I try to rinse it off, it takes twice as long to rinse it. Or if you rinse it fully and then you go to yeah. your drying towel and you go, oh, there's still soap on the yeah. surface. So I'm it looking for slimy. that happy medium of yeah. shaving cream, nice foam. I want it to sit on the car as long as it takes me to wash and I want it to rinse off. So just like most things, and us Honda guys know this better than most, I'm not looking for the highest horsepower, flashiest, you know, there's something about subtle function that well, works what, for me. What, and so this isn't the flashiest, it's not the best smelling, it's not the, there's nothing that GSF is like this remarkable chemical yeah. modern marvel, but the combination of all these different things that matter to me is why I like it the most. And yeah. that's yeah. pretty much everything in this garage. No, yeah. no, yeah. no, I, I, I agree. So GSF is, has been my go-to soap now for what, a couple of years. And I, I'll switch it up from time to time, just depending on what, what, I'm, what I'm doing or if, what I have on hand. But in my bucket, I may switch up my soap in my bucket, but typically yeah. uh, from a foaming stance, GSF has kind of been the most tried and true. And I mean, I think everybody else can agree with that as well. I mean, I don't yeah. know how much GSF we probably sell yeah. a month, but it's probably a lot. So this is one of the things I was talking about. We have the, it's, it's the little... mist bloom. This is where I have a lot of room for a future improvement as I develop solutions for you know interior washing. Why don't you just put like one like single exhaust fan for this particular thing? And just... Yeah, something maybe something like that, or some sort of little dehumidification device, or something like that. Well, it's it's this is a temporary thing that just needs to settle. But what I'm saying is, you've right. lifted everything up. Everything's right. in the air. Yep. You get something there, or there, and it just right. a quick yeah. pull. But I need something a little more elegant because not everybody can just cut a hole in their wall, you know? So that's... What? That's what I'm going to figure out. A little bit. So now I'm done, with, I'm done with my pressure washer and I'll show okay. you. This is the magic of the OG, of, you know, so the, now the we're magic at, of the we're, OG we're, life. I'm just going to put this thing away in two seconds. Nice, clean, yeah. organized. That goes in your holster, right? Whatever you want to call it. Yeah. All I, I usually take my towel. So I usually get a single multi-purpose towel out. Okay. that I've had for, you know, putting my foam can and stuff together. Make sure that my hose is looking pretty good here. Okay. And you're roll, rolling, often, clean, rolling often cleaning it? Oftentimes I'll pull it off a little bit just to reset it. Yeah, and then I'll clean it as I'm putting it back in. I need, I need a, this, this will be my year. This year will be the year that I I revamp my thing. You know, I got the stainless shelf. I got my little Karcher cube on there. But again, my, my, I literally, you're going to laugh. I'm running the pressure washer hose that I'm running. Don't laugh at me, actually. I'm running two of the stock Karcher hoses that I connected together. Yeah. And they, uh, they don't bend or flex like this. I have to, like, sit there and, like, I, like, lasso them together, basically, and then kind of set them in a corner on, like, a little hook. But it is janky, and I don't like it. So I think I do need a reel. Yeah. I'll, get, I'll get one. I, think it, I mean, if you wash and you value washing, and I don't know about you, but I like spending time in the garage. I do. You know, why wouldn't you start to perfect things? You spend a lot of time at your desk. Why wouldn't you make your desk clean and organized? Like, you feel I'm, I'm, but I don't, though. Do you know, do you know that me, as like an um, employer or whatever you want to say, like a worker, I'm one of those guys I get antsy sitting in the same, the same place for too long. I can't sit for long periods. You know why you get antsy? Because you've got a pile of trash around you. <laughs> I'm convinced. I don't want to be there. I want to just get up and, and walk away. So I'm one of those, I just kind of, I, I sometimes I'll, I'll walk around, I'll sit on the couch, you know, I, I, I move, I'm like a nomad. 
You know, I, I move from place to place, but. And so do you leave a wake of disaster from, play, from each place you go to? Yes, Guys? I do leave a lot of cups around, some, sometimes half, half drink sodas and things like that. But you know, it's, it's out of love and it's so people know I was there. They go, where's Anthony? I will follow the trail and you'll typically, you know, mm. you'll, you'll, you'll find them shortly. But I think I'm, I'm thinking about canceling my trip to uh, Boise because you're just going to, whatever I do there, you're going to mess it up. I will you. Tr no, I'll try to take that. The guy down. I thought was the organized, like, I thought he was the guy. This whole, I'm not, I'm not trying to pull, throw shade here. This is just, I'm just shocked. <laughs> He's shocked. It's okay. It's okay. You know, there's, you know, we, we learn more about each other every single day. You know, it, it's a, it's a, like, What have you learned new about me that you didn't know everything's the same? You, right? It's the, exactly what you thought. You, you make a good six out of ten burger. I mean, the yeah, burgers yeah. that you made last night were yeah, yeah. Six not out the of best. 10. But you know what? You put on a good show. You made me think that that was going to be a nine out of ten burger. You know that? No. Well, I told you it wasn't going to be right from the get. I know, but you I said I kind of know what I'm doing, but not other, great. How many other people are going to be taking off the little smash burger thing? You yeah, had the yeah, whole. Yeah. I'm I not mean, a cook. I'm a freaking detailer. I thought I thought you were going to pull out the egg and start, you know, doing the whole, you know, thing with the spatulas. So this is Adamac. Do you okay. do any uh, rust inhibiting stuff? No. Yeah. You just deal with the orange plume afterwards. No, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. I. I Technically, I mean, I yeah, just kind of This roll car backwards. isn't bad, yeah. This, it's not that bad. The cars that you have, most of those brakes are pretty, you know. They're not, they're not, they're not very aggressive. Like if you had a 911, like yeah. when you get your 911 someday, you don't have a choice. It's a freaking terrible rust plume. See, you hear that? Someday, 911. Jeff, if you're watching this, he said 911, so, you know, we'll see if we can make that happen. Um, so this, you don't have to rinse, though. No, no, no. It just stays on there. So I do this pre-leaf uh, pre blow, okay. and then I feel like I can, get, I can get the rest off. Okay. So this is diluted to 5%, okay. which, so it's pretty inexpensive. It's non-caustic or anything like that? Correct, yep. Okay. Okay, so we don't have, we don't have, we haven't incorporated this into the TRC lineup, but again, I don't know. It's, we don't, I don't really see too many situations at rust, but again, 9-11, someday. Well, or you just, when you get to cars like, like more, I don't want to say exotic, but more expensive sports cars with bigger brakes, yeah. more surface area, cross drilled is always a problem with rust. Yeah. Um, you can always do the pull back and forth method. I find that to be annoying. Even that, like a Porsche, I would still need to use Atomac and I would do a full little pull back and forth, you know, holding the brake slightly. Okay. And then I'd blow off the car. Just so I don't get that, especially if I had black wheels or darker yeah. wheels, so yeah. I don't get that darn rust yeah. plume. No. Yeah. Gloss black wheels, satin yeah. black, yeah, it's, yeah. All, it's all kind of picking up. Are you a leaf blower or Metrovac guy? What I am. You... I am a leaf blower guy. Okay. And that's the thing, because it's kind of, kind of, kind of you think it's, it's counter to what we would teach the rag company because, you know, we sell drying towels, right? Mm hmm I think you can have the best of both worlds. I think you can, you can dry a car. I still think you can use a premium drying towel, but I think that this is just, it's, it's a faster thing, right? So I started blow drying mm -hmm. everything again yeah. when I became a dad because I had to cut my wash time in half. This cut my this cut my drying time in half, but I'm still using premium towels. What, is, what does this say about my dadding? If um, it, I haven't been affected at all, <laughs> <laughs> like none. He's like, he's like, I don't know what you're talking about, Anthony. You know, I you know, I just. Uh, it's a little different when you have young children. It is. You know, it is. I would just bring them out here. You know? That's true. That's true. I, I guess I could start bringing her out and start doing things yeah. in the garage, but you know, we'll I see. I took all my hearing protection at uh, it's at Adam's house, so I'm gonna okay. put my Apple. Okay. I'm not this fancy. I'm not normally putting this well, on. Okay. But. I was gonna, I was gonna, is that part of the solution package? You buy and do you buy this and it comes with this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for an extra six hundred bucks. So this yeah. is which model? This is the seven sixty, which is I don't like. The only one I really like is the 580. It's the best one. I can't, ex I can't explain to you why. It sounds better. Well, I guess I can. It sounds better. I feel like it has more, it has less velocity. So it, it puts out less CFM, if you would. Okay. But it, for whatever reason, it just seems to be more concentrated. Okay. Um, I might be totally making that up. We did test it. The 765 has, does have more output. Um, but I feel like the 580, it just has, I don't know, the right amount of output that seems to function best. But yeah. they discontinued it. Okay. So there's a few of them left around. But, yeah. uh, but my 580 is at Adams. I've been using it you know, on his cars. Okay. So I grabbed the 765 from my, uh, my, you know, the studio down the street. And then this is the new Ego Stubby. The one that they this came is their, out with. Their this OEM, is their version, yeah. Yeah, their OEM one. So Which I, have is, the, I have the 530. Is this, is, would you say the and 5, that's fine. Yep. 530 is still good? Yeah, okay. I used the 530 forever. I mean, that was the one. 
Okay. I mean, the, the differences are so subtle. The worst one is the 650, which is the one that people buy the most. Okay. That one has the shrillest sound and seems to be the least effective. Okay. Um, but the 650 and 765 are the two you know, current ones. Okay. Uh, but if you can get a 580, I'd rather have a 530 than this. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it makes me it makes me feel pretty good about my purchase a couple and, years and ago. And I, right? I again I can't other other than I've used all of these for hours and hours and hours, both blowing off my driveway, blowing off cars. Um, I just have a preference based on that time, that experience. That the 580 is the best. The 530 is my second favorite. This would be third. Okay. Really, honestly, it comes down to. Um, you know which one is available you know at the time because yeah. they're all good but this is to me is the best drying experience is, is an ego blower it's the it's, milwaukee's decent yeah. but these are better so i have the what's it called the, i have that little ma master blaster right i have one of those at home mm -hmm. and i also have this at home the master blaster is fine but the hoses that they use right are very rigid mm -hmm. and it's so every crap. single time i go to it's like I go to, it's stuck know, on it's, the tires it's, it's you know you gotta get it out you gotta wrap I'm it like, back up I'm, I hate I'm, I'm dancing in the garage right people walk out like what are you doing i'm like i'm trying to unravel it's this terrible. hose it's not good We're gonna get flamed. You know what we forgot to do? Door jam cleaning. We'll have to clean it after fact. So it's funny, I do that at last. Yeah, do, I, I, do it, I, do I like it. to do it in the in mid process, but. Yeah. I do it very last, because the thing is, is when you're blow drying, right? You're blow drying, you're gonna be blowing potential water back into that jam, True. right? I'm just talking about the, I just like wipe it down with my sponge. Oh, wait, wait, sponge. Wait, soap with, yeah. oh, oh, you yeah, do that, yeah. okay. Yeah, and then it rinses out as I'm rinsing, yeah, yeah, and then I get the yeah. final wipe when I, because I used to have a dedicated door jam towel, and when I started yeah. doing the cleaning beforehand, then I didn't feel like I needed a dedicated door jam towel. I can use the same towels I'm using to dry. So that's what I have waterless wash. I have a waterless wash that I dedicate sure. my, my door jam cleaning spray, yeah. and that's what I have on me, right? For a while, I was just using quick detailers that I just didn't care about, yeah. but now I kind of use just a dedicated waterless wash. I have my towel it's I don't, know, I don't know what 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 grade of towel I use for that but it's usually like a creature edgeless or something like that and yeah I'll go through and knock them down like that but are these, co are these door gems coated yeah of course come on yeah. I don't know I maybe so in the world of Anthony where you're the only dad that's ever existed mm -hmm. Yes. Do you, I'm guessing maybe you don't, you blow dry the car off a little quicker. You spend a lot of time, I spend a lot of time in this step, getting, you know, going back over the car, or do you? So I blow dry, I get most of the, most of the, most, not, actually I blow dry less than this. So yeah. I blow dry to a, about a halfway point to where you're at right now. Yep. I'll come back through with my drying towel and yep. my drying aid, whatever I'm using at that time, yep. right? I go through, dry everything, pick up everything up, and then what I've done at that point, right, especially if I'm using something that changes the surface tension, right, makes it even slicker, right, yeah. I come back through with my blower one more time. I like that idea. And then yeah. it uses the, the, the blower surface tension to blow things off even faster hmm, that's than smart. it did before the coating. I like that. This thing looks good. It looks yeah. really good. I think I'm gonna, I think just seeing it, I kinda wanna throw spacers now on mine. I don't know if I'll go 20, I might go like 15, but do you want know spacers? Do you H&R? Do you want know what spacers you got? Yes, H&R. Yeah. Okay, all right, so now, so this drying the, aid time or what? Yeah, so this, you know, this, 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 this we, can we can debate expertise here, but I don't think I can debate this one, the microfiber uh, expertise here, so tell me what to do. Okay, so, with this much left on the surface here, yeah. right? I would have like what would you? I might not have that towel, okay. but what towel would you use? Oh, just for, tell for, me that while I'm doing this. <laughs> so, I'm a big fan of the twist loops, but I also am a big fan of the gauntlets here, right? So yeah. this, so right here, so there's a difference in twist loops, right? So this right yeah. here, yeah. short pile twist loop, and then you have a long yeah. pile twist loop. Yep. Yeah. The the benefit of short pile twist loop is the glide feels better. It mm -hmm. feels better when using a product like that, like yeah. Beadmaker, like from back in the day, right? Yep. Um, and it feels really good. But the long pile twist loops are going to do a better job of absorbency, but they may catch an edge, right? So like the Evo, for example, I may catch it on the corner of this hood, and I might pull one of the twist loop strands. 
And if that happens, it breaks that and it feels kind of weird, right? Yeah. But what I'll typically do is I'll have my drying towel, one or the other gauntlet. I'll usually just have one, but in the largest size of that, that one comes in, the 25 by 36. Okay. And that'll be my paint drying towel. But then I will have a separate chemical and a separate towel for my glass which may be a blue version of this, right? Mm -hmm. Which I'll go through with my glass cleaner and do it like that. So you'll do glass after you're done? I'll do glass after I'm done. Glass is last. Gotcha. Okay. And what, what drying aid are you using? Are you still bee maker? Are no. you, are you... I, 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 use, I use a mix of everything. So I'll, I'll use bee maker when I want to. Like, I, I mean, I'll use sort of like blue bee maker from a couple of years ago that I'm still trying to get through. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll use, I'll use Beadmaker from time to time. I'll use G Technics Quick Detailer because I really like that one, even though it doesn't have a scent. I'll use Paint Gloss from PNS because that's one I can absolutely just blow through. I can use as much as I want, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not going to have any negative effect on anything, and it's very cost efficient, so I can use something like that. Um, I'll use, I don't know. Oh, Very right. rarely am I using straight up sealants anymore as drying aids because I want to keep my towels around and I don't have the time sometimes to throw them straight into the wash with rags like and bridges. Like a reload or C2B3 so, or something like that. Yeah. It's just, so and that I don't, takes more time. It takes and, more time. And I just, and it's again, it's the towel situation where I go, oh man, I might seal the towels up, mm -hmm. which obviously rags to riches is going to reverse that. I just may not have that time in that moment to go through that wash process of, of doing that. Yeah, but even rags of riches isn't going to blow through a, a giant layer of two loads of reload on your, you know, yeah. C two V three. May not. Can I see? Can I see your sprayer here? So, did you do this fender? No. So on this right here, because what I do when I'm using a drying aid, I go spray into the towel and I go spray it onto the fender. Are you mm -hmm. spraying into the towel at all? I don't like that. No. You don't like that. Is it because you feel like it seals the towel, or do you feel like? No, I just find it necessary. Now to use one tenth of that. You would have used one tenth of that? Yeah. What I just sprayed? Correct. This isn't bead maker. Okay, all right, all right. Look, a little, a little Mr. Roo. I, I, I did the same, I did, literally did the same exact no, thing. No, you were like this. No, I literally did the same exact thing. It didn't hurt, it's just a waste of product. In old age, he's starting to see things, and so that's what I think it is, right? Something like that? No, I didn't use a lot. I think, I think that feels pretty good. Okay, it gets, it gets slicker after what? The third wipe, third pass? It starts feeling better? Well, this will, the, the difference between this and bead makers, this will flash, you know? So even if you didn't wipe it all off, it'll disappear. Okay. You know, where bead maker, you gotta get it off or it ain't, it ain't flashing, then you'll have a streak. Okay. So you're using this on glass too and you're never having mm -hmm. any streaking issues? Yep. Okay. That feels pretty good. And you know, I like to do this for the bulk, the initial drying, and then I'll get around an entire car, you know, with just two towels. Okay. Trim, glass, jams, under the hood, everywhere, you know, with this with this stuff. This doesn't have a, no smell to it. No, I took the scent out. The scent made it unstable. It would gum up bottles and stuff. Okay. I didn't like it. And so we took the color and scent out. Okay. Because they were making it pink and they were adding some weird scent to it. And then it, the bottles were all goopy. So is bead maker even in the, in the process anymore? No. Oops. No, not don't, at all. Don't do that. Don't be yeah. careful. Well, unfortunately, for there's carbon fiber. So not, not at all. Not anywhere. No bead maker, you know. Okay. Can I use this, this towel and, and dry this over here? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, bead maker is still, you know, it's in my eyes, it's still one of the number one kind of best bang for your buck, you know, gets you into the door on a product that really does change the look of the car and really does change the feel. And again, coming at it from a cost perspective, it makes a lot of sense for most people, right? So, I mean, we, we so this, a lot of people to so that. this does that. And I thought, I don't want to change. I like bead maker. This does that. Exact same thing without some of the byproducts, some of the negative aspects of bead maker, like static buildup. Now, did you ever? Did you ever try Dream Maker though? I hated Dream Maker. I don't. You're on crack. It's the worst product I've ever used. Absolutely hated it. I had no what? idea what you're talking about. What? That's smear city. Out of all of the products, it's like smearing goop on your paint, and it takes freaking 27 wipes to get off. 
Maybe you guys sent me a bad bottle of it, but I punted it in the trash after. Matt, two, you two know tries. that I helped like I helped tremendously with that product. It's the worst like, one I've ever used. Like eight out of like eight out of ten of a lot of the work and testing and all of that, the scent and all that, the color. Well, it's it's about it must be at the same level of your desk organization here because <laughs> I'm I'm leaving. Oh, why am I even here anymore, right? We I wanted to love it. We I was like, sweet, I got a new product. I'll punt this OG drying aid nonsense. I'm dealing with B&B &B all the darn time, and let's do it. Can't believe it. I make more money that. on Bead Maker than I do on OG drying aid. That's, it's not even close. Can't believe I'm, I can't believe I'm hearing this right. Did you spray this quarter right here? Is this good? Yeah, yeah it's ready. Can't believe I'm hearing this right now. Yeah, I don't think you. Dream Maker. You might want to cut this part out. <laughs> Dream Maker is... Here's the thing. It, it's I, a nightmare. I, I'm not using Dreammaker all the time, but if I'm going to a car show, I am one, not even with, without question, I'm using that product. Yeah, and you're going to spend three and a half hours putting it on. No, no. Maybe I, I got to teach him how to put that product on. Maybe that's something we can do in a I following, tried. following trip. When you come up to Idaho. I tried I'll, 15 different ways putting it on and put a lot on, put a little bit on, put a little spritz on, spray it on the towel, spray it on my anus. None of it worked. <laughs> That's your, that's your problem right there. Should have done that. You fart out smelling, you know, your farts may smell like watermelon, so that's okay. I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? I did the same thing I did with your reactivation shampoo and pumped it straight in the trash. <laughs> it's not my reactivation That could have shampoo. gone to somebody and then I would have ruined their life. No, so. no, they would have, they would have used it. But no, Dream Maker, it's not for everybody. It was meant for a specific purpose. And, and I don't what think was that purpose? To annoy the, you and streak up no, your paint? the purpose was to add a significant amount of gloss, to add a little bit of slickness, to add oh, a, yeah. a, a euphoric application where you're smelling beautiful watermelon and all that stuff. Because when we were scenting that, or I guess when, if you want to say I was scenting that, it was my choice. I was down to two different, two different scents. Gummy bears and watermelon. And the gummy bears, after doing a lot of, you know, surveying of people, they didn't like how artificially sweet it smelled, so we went with watermelon. So that's how eventually we came to the I'm not worried about the scent, I'm worrying about the streakiness. I want to be able to do this, make it really easy. Looks great, but functions great. But if you sprayed great. this amount of Dream Maker on the surface, it would be this easy. No, I would have to do this. And then this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and keep going, keep going. Oh, let me get another towel. All right, let me do that. All right, let me get some bead maker to oh, spritz on there to get the rest of it off. That's what happens with Dream Maker. <laughs> what? Okay, all right, maybe, okay. Maybe, you know what, maybe it's a humidity thing, right? Because whenever somebody has a detailing product that doesn't work down here in this hemisphere, and they just blame the humidity. And you know what, I'm just yeah, gonna I mean, do it that. it very well could be, yeah. It's the humidity, sure. Or maybe it doesn't play well with CSL XO. That's not true because I, that's all I put it on is CSL and XO. Right. And it loves it. It, it, it. it thirsts for it. It needs it. But you know, whatever. Different strokes for different folks. Here we go. We can agree to disagree. That's how it works here, right? You can disagree with Matt, but still kind of like him. Kind of. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> So, I don't know. I think, I think this, this, this feels pretty good though. I like it. It gets better, like I said, it gets better when you kind of flip the towel and go back over it one more time. Yeah. I like the way it feels. It's not bad. Are you gonna PPF this thing or no? No. No PPF? No. What are you gonna do with the first, first big rock chip on the hood? Throw the car away and get a new one? <laughs> what does what everybody do when they get a rock chip? Get a new car? Well, you, I, well, I mean, I, don't know, I was going to say you did, remember with the, I don't know. remember, no, remember, I, do you, you remember just the, deal with the rock chip. I remember mean, the, remember the trunk on the M3? That was a horror story. What was it? It was a water spot, right? Remember the trunk on the M3? The water spot? Yeah, yeah. There was a rear bumper, you know. Oh, uh, that's what it was. I was using the IR lamp to uh, get the uh, water spots off. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I always want to avoid PPF if I can, and the function of this car is you know I'm not I'm not tailgating people in it you know it's it's gonna be fine. Well, there's and if I have to repaint it you know at some point whatever. Yeah. What we're finding you know, out. Even though this is a special Evo, it's not a super special car to me. You know. Yeah, well, it's special to me, but I mean, it's besides the point. But the thing is, is here in this location, 
In terms of people that he would be tailgating, he'd be tailgating people in golf carts. Right. What, what are they going to really kick up, right? Corvettes going, you know, 30 miles an hour under the speed limit, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you're using the same towels here on the door jams? Correct. So because normally I'd keep the door jams really clean, and I'd clean it beforehand, I'd just use the same towel. I used to have a dedicated towel for door jams. I was mm -hmm. using a, what was a really spongy, um, the, perp, the pink one, or it was purple. Purple, spongy. Eagle 350. Minx? Was it a three? Minx. Minx. Minx okay. is what I used to use in the door jams. Okay. And I would just. That was a, that's a good them. towel for that because you can just shove it into places. So, yeah, I, so can I just see throw that. a little drying aid on the door jams and go for it. Okay. So, so far, this is my process as well, going through on the door jams and stuff like that. But I mean, I, like I said, I kind of go through and. I'll just use whatever waterless wash I have. I don't necessarily take soap or my mitt to it. Yeah. Believe I will. So I like that process of when you go and do soap, then my towels, like I said, I'm not picking up all kinds of dirt. Yeah. I've gotten it on already. Okay. And if there's any soap left over, I'm gonna, you know, pick up a little bit of. But generally, in the rinse and the uh, blow off, you know, with the uh, leaf blower. Yeah. It's taken care of. This thing's, this thing's freaking clean. People. Check these out. These things are pretty cool for the gym. If you start going back to the gym again someday. <laughs> so. I am leaving, dude. I'm going home. I hate seat covers. Okay. Like this is temporary. So it has this neoprene stuff so it doesn't slide around. You know, I always put a towel on the seat and it's you know, trying to get in the car where the towel doesn't fall okay. off. And so you slide this over the headrest. Yeah. And then this doesn't allow your sweat to come through. And then, yeah. but it's still washable. And yeah. then I don't have to like drive around with a seat cover on my freaking car looking like a dork. How much are you sweating? A lot. I mean, you, it's, it's Florida, dude. I mean. That's true. That I, and I'm working out. Like, I try to stay it's, like, it's like, you know, in the summertime, it's like you jump, jump in a pool. Yeah. It's yeah. that nasty. Okay, I get swampy. And I'm not a real big sweater, but when know. it's 100 and 75% and humidity and you're like, Going for it, yeah. You're uh, drenched. Yeah, I get that. I wouldn't like that. I wouldn't like that as well. Do you spray and spray over here? Did you? Nah, I'm just I'm just going. Just wiping it. Okay. Yeah. Spray doesn't do jack for this. God, dude, this trunk is like literally. It is literally brand new. This is crazy. You understand well, how crazy this is? Well, I've got my me? droop. I've got to fix. I know. Yeah. That's the. Because I took the spare the out. Yeah. out. But, God. What, what's the rear, what rear strut bar did you get? You did, you did a strut bar um, Yeah, what is that one? Um, it's nice. uh, white line. White line? Yeah. Okay. No, that's clean. God, yeah. It's weird. Again, I'm a weird person. Things like this, the seals, yeah. trim. Like all this, you know, it still has like the blue huh, you know, paint, the paint markings or whatever from, new. from the factory. Yeah, this thing's beautiful. Now, this is the original wiper blade. Yeah. Over here. Yeah, well, this is going pretty good. I think that this is a, this is pretty easy, you know, following this along. Yep. But I do like, but this environment is a, makes a big difference. I like. Yeah, I like we're air we conditioned. It's not humid. It's beautiful. We're not racing the sun. We're not racing the sun setting or rising. We're yep. just hanging out, taking it easy, talking to the people. I like it. I do, I do like this idea. I am going to take that. So after I'm done here, I'm going to grab a leap blower to give it one more little whackaroo. And, and get watch. The, we'll just watch, just watch what yeah. happens. Because you're going to pull more water out of somewhere, yeah. but it's going to like ski right off. It's going to literally just right off. It's perfect. And oh. anything that's in the door jams too, because of what you're doing here, you're like still going to get air that's going to pass through into that door jam, just ever so lightly. Yep. And it's going to... We'll just get it, so let's say we're 95% dry, we get another 3% out, yeah. and then we're almost completely dry. Yeah. And all jams and all And when I do that, right, so you know how when you go for a drive right after that, you'll have a wall, you'll have a drip line coming yeah. from the rear bumper or something like that? Yeah. I won't have that. Yeah. Ever. I like that a lot. So I never have to touch anything up, I don't have to bring towels with me in the car if I'm driving somewhere to go to a photo shoot or a video thing where I have to go back through and, and touch anything up. I mean, it's, it's that easy. And you already have everything out, so it just makes sense. Yeah, this is really helpful. I think, uh, I think that while well, we're onto something here on 
um, doing wash and talks with other people and, and picking up little tidbits. I mean, I, I don't I don't spend any time like watching other people wash anymore. You know, yeah. maybe I should start doing that. I'm, I'm picking up some things that I I literally never even considered spraying the like the, the, the tire cleaner on the brush. Never. Never even thought of it, never pondered it, never crossed my mind. I never crossed my mind to go out here and blow off the car again after I'm done drying. Never even considered it. You, you could take half of what you spray into the tire and take half of, what, half of that and then just do a couple sprays in the brush and you'll have the same effect that you have, if not even better. Yeah. Oh crap, I forgot that this is an Evo and, and what happens here. I forget, I forget that this is what happens. So when you have a when you have a gaping hole in your hood, yeah, everything gets soaked. Everything wet. comes through. You don't spray with drying aid. You just go in. Yeah, I'm just going. Wipe in. it up. Okay. Yep. Oh man. Yeah. No, this is. I think you could. I think you should do this. Who would you have? If you could pick. If you could pick three people that you would have on a wash and talk like this. Any any car that you want to do. Mm -hmm. Who would you take off the top of your head? That you think Detailing you would learn people. From. De who who would you learn something from? Forensic detailing. Kay. John. Okay. I'd love to do it, with John. Yeah. Um, Did this pop off? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Pan and I have done this before, so I wouldn't count Pan in that list because we've already done this kind of thing yeah. together. Um, what the heck? Who else would I want to do it with? Stupid yeah, it's not, uh... yeah, it's not that easy to go over that, that little grommet. John at Forensic. That's it? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Corey from CarPro. Okay. Corey's a you know, wealth of knowledge. Okay. I'm thinking washing, not, you know, polishing. Yeah. You know, like a Jason Rose is not a wash. He didn't give a crap about washing. The washing is a means to an end for you know yeah. for a, for him. You know, I'm thinking about the the washing side of things, the the normal maintenance. Oh, um, Jim White. Oh yeah. So I've never never washed a car with him. Or did we watch him wash a car? I don't think we washed it with him. I think we watched him wash a car, and that was fun. I liked watching him work. You mm -hmm. wrote his ATV. And I wrote his ATV. That's the work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a fun trip. But no, that, yeah. No, I 100% I agree. I think, I think all those picks are, are, are valid picks. They require flights. Some of them do. So you just need to get them over here. See now? Blow dry mm -hmm. one more time. Mm -hmm. Blow dry one more time. No, no, leave that. Blow dry it. Everything will come off. Mm. Train, train your mind, train your body. Don't push your luck here on uh, telling <laughs> me what to do. <laughs> Last thing is wheels and tires. And it depends, depends on how much time I have, you know, because I'm a busy dad. You are, um, yeah, you got one more than I do, so I mean. And um, joking. But uh, it just depends on when I'm going to drive the car. But like this, I'm, I'm going to. Oftentimes, maybe every third wash, I'll go and put, throw a little drying aid on the wheels, okay. and I'll always dress the tires, almost always. Okay. Unless the car was not driven much at all. So I like a couple of these guys, 12 by 12s. This is, my, this is probably my favorite towel in the whole lineup. Is it? Yeah, 12 by 12. 12 by 12, yeah. Yeah. And then I get my tire dressing. Okay. And the applicator you're using for this? Do I not have any tire dressing? I think I have it. Oh, I think what I did last time was just use the darn gallon. I forgot. Dump my yeah, brush in. Forgot that you have your own. You, you have your own tire dressing, and this doesn't smell like anything either, right? No, this does smell. You'll like the smell of this. Ooh, I do like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I this like is that a lot. Actually, seriously, I do like that a lot. I didn't know credit that credit good. Scott Smith who basically made this stuff. Smells good. Yeah. That's nice. That's probably got to be one of my top, top three favorite smelling. It smells a little better out of the container too. So. Does it? 
it'll ruin a spray bottle. So I don't want to, because once you put this in, it ain't coming out. Okay. So I'm not going to put it in a spray bottle. I'm just going to dip into this. So what I normally do on my wheels. Did that rust inhibitor crap make a difference? Look, I still see they look kind of rusty. Yeah, if you didn't, these would be plume crazy. You know, if you remember, we're in a super humid. Okay. So you're going through and you're drying your, drying your wheels. Yeah, just basic, just getting the excess, the extra off. Okay. And the little spritz of drying aid on it. That was the one flaw of this car. It did have, I think that bull crap undercoating stuff that they sprayed on the car kind of ate through one small section of one of the wheels. Hmm. Because you had the whole thing you had, what's his name, the driest guy, he blasted everything underneath the bottom, right? Yeah, yeah and then we painted the uh, fenders. We painted fender the wells. fenders. And then the other thing, pulling off the, the stupid. wheel weights, yeah. yeah. Wheel Might, weight. Mine have the same exact, mm -hmm. same, literally the same exact mark. And it took, it takes like a chunk of that paint off, too. This is brand new. You're gonna. Oh, that's right, I took mine to Adams. I don't think I can use it. But I use this for tires. Well, that hurts me that you do that. That's the best thing. I know, but it's such a nice brush to waste it on that. Yeah, well, so your, oh god. It lasts forever too. Forty dollar brush. Yeah, okay. but I mean, I'm still on my original prototype. Okay. And still using it. Now, it's at Adams right now. Now, did you try the screwball yet? The one that we helped uh, with. It's it's boar's hair. Not Maybe. synthetic Maybe. like that. I don't, I don't so know. it's all bla it's black on black, black on black boar's hair does the same exact thing you're looking to do, but it's slightly stiffer. I don't remember. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. So, so dress I'll, dressing's applied. Are you going back and getting the wheel since you've got some of the dressing on the wheel? Um, I will at the end. Okay. So I'm gonna let it. Sit. Sometimes I'll let it sit. You grab my drying aid for me there, assistant Anthony. There you go, sir. Thank you very much. So all this soap that's here on the garage floor, this just... Just, get, just do its thing, go wherever it wants. Work. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> go wherever it wants. Now, I mean, all the water, if you walk outside and you look in the driveway, all that water ran out. Because Swiss Tracks is, is, um, is channeled, so the water can run. So it's not gonna block the water and make it sit here. So if you have, you have to have a natural decline in your garage well, for that to be effective. Every garage has to have that everywhere by code. So, well, I mean, there's some there's some pretty it's like garages generally a one here. degree. You know, you like your garage or your house, whether you know it or yeah, not, has yeah. a slope. It does. It does. Yeah, it does. I know. I know for sure it has a slope. Yeah. You know, one time Dane was over at my house. We were filming a garage tour. Right. This would kill you. We were filming a garage tour and we were going around my garage and all that and I had my Evo parked in the driveway, right? Why would I have my Evo parked in the driveway? I never pull it out, it's always in, in the garage. But since for the tour, I pulled out into the driveway. So uh -huh. we're out there doing the tour yeah. and it was hot. It was like 90 degrees that day. Yeah. And so I said, oh man, can I get you guys a glass of ice water? And everybody goes, yeah. So Dane's sitting in my Viper chair, right? And I go to get him a glass of ice water. I go inside the house to have the kindness of my heart, right? Because I have a big heart and I care about people. Mm -hmm. I don't want him overheating, not my friend. Yep. And so I go get him a glass of ice water. I come back out in the garage and I see him standing in front of my Evo of my car with a Viper chair next to it. And I go, and he goes, oh, 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 I'm sorry. It's not, it's not that bad. And I go, it's not that bad. What happened? He goes, well, I was sitting in the Viper chair and I got up and it kind of just started going down because of the slope of your garage and it just happened to hit the front of your car. I literally, I had a little mini meltdown. Nobody knows that in the video, but I did have like a little mini meltdown and I ran over, I'm like looking underneath. It kind of nicked the front lip like a little bit. So it wasn't that bad. Oh, it so. really did hit the car? I oh, thought oh, he was messing no, with you. No, it did. It hit the car. It rolled, oh. in the, rolled in the front, hit the lip. I thought the moral of the story was he was just messing with you. No, it hit the front lip. And so the moral of the story is Viper chairs have better rollers than what you think, better casters than what you think. And to Matt's point, every garage does have a slope, <laughs> whether you think it does or not. So don't let your Viper chair just roll freely, as that will roll into whatever it needs to go. So anyways. Yeah. Eventually, you know, he apologized immediately. We got along again after about a year. If only your desk didn't have a natural slope toward the garbage can. 
<laughs> I wish, you know what I wish I had? I wish I had like a laundry chute. So like I had a hole in it so I could just push everything yeah, into the like, hole. You're like the Chipotle it, trash can. Yeah, and it know? just falls through and lands in that. Why hasn't anybody made, come up with that idea yet? That, that could be the next OG solution. Well, most people don't have a pile of trash on their desk. So they figure the, 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 you know, the candidate or the customer base for that is a pretty small percentage of people. Well, you know, maybe, would, maybe you wouldn't would be get, a great business Maybe model. you would get me as a customer, you'd convert me because now you've catered to my lifestyle. Mm. You ever thought about that? No, nope, I haven't actually. No, I, I haven't. probably shouldn't. I should stay, stay the course here. <laughs> stay the course. Stay, continue doing what you love and people will either convert or, or you'll be by yourself in you're... a cave somewhere, you know, <laughs> all alone, <laughs> which is a very likely scenario. We have fun here. So that's the yeah. thing. You have to make sure that any guests you get on here, right? Yeah. You have to make sure they either understand you enough. I'll make them some six out of 10 burgers. Make them some six out of 10 Maybe burgers. I'll get it up to six and a half out of 10. I'm not coming back here for the burgers ever, but you know, I may come back here to wash a car. Or I might come back here just to hang out, sit on the couch and- What if you yes. made burgers, what would they be? If I made burgers what yeah. they would be, I would make you a nine out of 10 burger. Oh, geez. I would make you one of the best burgers you've ever had in your life. You would probably, you would have a tear in your eye as you were eating this burger. Do you even know how to make a burger? Yeah, I know how to make a Do burger. Do you even have a grill? Yeah, I got a grill. Okay, what kind it, of grill? It's a, um, what's it called? It's, what's that, what's the, it starts with an S, Spirit? Is that, is that a brand? Uh, Weber Spirit. Weber Spirit? Yeah, I think I got a Weber Spirit. Yeah, Weber yeah. Spirit is the Chinese Weber. We call it a Sweber. <laughs> That's the one I have at LZ's that I bought that I'm gonna throw away when I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't throw it away. Bring it over. Send it to Idaho. I'll, I'm not gonna pay for shipping, but yeah. uh, you know. It, yeah. No. Okay. Anyways, no, it'd be a good burger. I'd, I'd, I'd make it right and I'd give it. I'd, I'd put. And here, you know what the thing is? He made his burgers last night, and halfway through eating the burger, he goes, "Ah, oh, maybe I should have offered you guys ketchup, right?" So. Burger with bun, meat, and onions. If you were a better guest, you would have said, hey, let me go grab the ketchup for you. I don't know what I can ask for here. I don't know what you have, because I don't know if you're gonna say, freaking ketchup, I don't like ketchup here. I don't like ketchup in this house, just pure sugar. I don't know what you're gonna say. So I was just trying to be respectful and say, you know, maybe in Florida they do things a little bit different. They don't believe in ketchup. It was good, it was good. I, 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 like I said, wouldn't come back for the burger, but when he comes to Idaho, maybe we'll make that a whole segment where we'll get the grill out, cook up some just mean nine out of 10 burgers all day long. I'm down. Hey, okay. if I don't have to cook it, I'm, I'm up for it. Okay. And then maybe we might have to have a steak cook off because he still says he makes a pretty good steak, but I don't know about that yet. You want to check some tire pressures while we're at it? You ever do that while you're washing? No, never. No? But it's not a actually not a bad idea though. Yeah. Okay. That one tire is looking a little low. You set it, right? You set it to whatever you want. 32 and it goes to it, done. That's I, sick. I need to modify it with a better chuck on the end here. Oh, you, oh, you have, oh, sorry, you didn't tell me I adjust my mic. You have one? Is it sick? Pretty cool? I just got it. I think they were doing some things that like, yeah, to where, I thought that, I, that's what I'm saying, I, I, I didn't know they were doing inflators. I thought they were doing something similar to that, but I didn't know if it was like, that's, 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 some, so that's, like good t that's a good takeaway for me right here. This is worth me, me investing in this because I do this enough where I do check tire pressures, right? Because I got the motorcycles, I got the cars and all of that. And so, but I have to yeah. turn on my compressor every time I want to do that. And I don't always want to have to turn on my compressor and make it a whole deal out of it. I mean, this is the whole reason why I didn't get a compressor for this garage, at least not yet. Well, that's because that's my goodness. most, besides using my blowgun, that's my most used thing. I use my compressor for his tire pressures. It's pretty sweet. That's pretty sick. Will it let air out if you want it to? Or no? Um, let's try it. I think so. Because, like, what if you set it to, like, 28 now? No, nope. no. I'm gonna have to air it. Just up. Yeah. Okay. Well, then we're good. That's pretty. But you have to screw it on, though. That's the thing, right? 
trade-off, you have to screw it well, up. Well, that's you can change this chuck out apparently. Some people are saying I think I can pull the shrink wrap back and then I can I can change that change out. Change the fitting. So a lot of people have modified, put like a twist lock on here. Twist lock or like a clamp, you know, I mean the kind of that clamp on the top or whatever. Yeah. A bicycle style. Twist and lock is a brand that makes a chuck that where you just just stick it on there. Because you lose a little bit of air when they you use a little bit of air. Oh, this one's, these are good. I hope, I hope people like, you're going to have to, like I said, you're going to have to pull fun people for your next ones if you ever do, do guess. <laughs> have you told people you'd switch to the busher yet? Uh, no, we haven't, the video will be up, I think, next week. Oh, sweet, so maybe by the time this one's out, I don't know. It's, it's, the, it's the best, it's the best Evo exhaust. It's the best Evo exhaust. American exhaust, like Matt said. It's not, JDM's I mean, not always the answer. Exotic's not always the answer. Sometimes the Dundon American. exhaust, American. The American racing headers, my E92, American. Yeah. Busher, American. I mean, it's wild because I always go the longest route possible, most amount of money possible, and I end up at the cheapest and best sounding, which almost invariably ends up being the American version. So last step I did want to do to this, which I normally would put on before I put the car or put the exhaust on the car. I just, I don't know, I forgot to do it the other day. So we're gonna put a little Dr. Beasley's metal coat on there. Haven't used, so we got, so Dr. Beasley's, so we got a bunch of goodies from them, right? Uh -huh. Cause yeah. they had a training class at TRC. Really fun, it was a, it was a fan, we had a ton of fun. It was, it was a really good time. Uh, and so they left behind some of this with the metal coat. I haven't had a chance to try it. Because I don't know if it's an actual coating or is it a polish with just like a sealer in it, or like a sealant. You know they say I mean? it's a, they say it's a true coating, um, and it freaking works, man. I mean, it lasts a long time. I don't have to do anything. Look how easy it is. I just do a little surface prep, and it, it's almost like sunscreen. It goes on like sunscreen. I'm just gonna. Well, the, the bottle looks like sunscreen. Right. That tip is nice. See what I mean? Like that tip. It's okay, yeah. It's okay, yeah. It's not bad. The fits, pictures make it look stupid, but no, it fits the look of the car right. how it should be. So all I do is I use the same darn towel the whole way through the process. Dr. Beasley's does make good stuff. Are you selling? Are you selling Dr. Beasley's? Mm -hmm. Yep. So you can find this obsessgarage.com, right? And all the products used today, minus actually, I think your pre wash, right? Head to obsessgarage.com, you know, stock Pre-wash, pre-order should be up in a week or so. Sweet. Yeah. Or you can head to the ragcompany.com too. I mean, we sell some of this stuff here as well. You know, pick, pick and choose, right? No, do not. You're on my channel. I'm oh. like sending you subscribers. <laughs> Buy everything from me. Subscribe to the Rag Company YouTube channel. Buy the stuff from Matt. That's, there, yeah, you that's there, fair, you that's there you go. There you go. It's a fair compromise. We'll meet, a we'll meet in the middle there. Also, still buy stuff from us. But I mean, whatever you want to do, right? No pressure. Do so. not buy from them. Buy from me. <laughs> You're really getting in there. That's it. Okay, done. That's it. No, wipe, wipe that. You. There's well, I gotta wipe there. it off. That was just. The oh, wipe you on. supplied yeah. it. Okay, gotcha. I forget what they say I'm, to do. I'm getting ahead of myself here. But you did prep it, and what do you use? Right, evenly after covering that section, use a clean to remove. So it's wipe on, wipe off. And I just find a section on the towel that I didn't get yeah. any of the product on and go okay. get it. We're, we're the same here. This is exactly how I do it. And that's it. And then it'll bead water. It'll help clean up a little easier. Yeah. Feels it's, smooth. It's Feels slick. It's super high temp. Yep. I mean, it's metal, so it's porous, but it, yeah. the, so it's not going to, it's not painted, but it is stainless, so it's going to feel slickish. And that's it. Normally I'll do this before I put the exhaust on, do the whole thing, yeah, you know, yeah. coat the whole thing. But this time, I'll just do I use, I use C5, or at least the whole use, rear section. I use C5 on all my exhausts. The best wheel coating. <sighs> Worst wheel coating. <laughs> you can buy C5 and more at ragcompany.com. How do your cabinets look in your house? Um, mine are not bad. Not bad in my garage. My cabinets in my house are very well organized. My wife's crazy. My pantry's very well organized. My wife is crazy about that kind of stuff. So that's good. That's why we, we get along well. But um, in my garage, they're pretty good. My chemical cabinet's good. My random stuff's good. Here's a little tip for the people, for the obsessed garage people that I learned. 
is that I wanted to tuck this thing nicely in the corner. Mm -hmm. the, problem, the problem is when I, the door, the list of cabinets open from the right. So I always have to freaking open this door mm -hmm. when I should have put the garbage cans on the right. Mm -hmm. That way I could just pull just it, pull out, it out. out and have yeah. to open both doors, which is annoying. Yeah. That's a wrap. Shelly, stay out of here. Oh, okay. Oh, here's on TV. So that's a wrap. Mm -hmm. Thanks everybody for watching. Go subscribe to the Ride Company channel. Buy everything from Obsessed Garage. <laughs> And um, you also have a Facebook group. Yeah. Uh, if you're not in the Obsessed Garage Facebook group, you should get in there as well. Um, any other? Uh... Rag Company Facebook group. Balance between the two. You know what I'm saying? It's good. Yin and yang. Yeah. There's some Matt haters in there. There's We're... a lot of Matt haters in the Matt Facebook group, in the Obsessed Garage Facebook group, too. So no, yeah, there's it's... anti haters everywhere, you know? So yeah, there's fine. haters all over the place. It's fine. We need, instead of haters, we need more lovers. Yeah. Now, is that weird to say? No, that's not a weird to say. Weird. Yeah. A little, a little weird. weird. But I get what you mean. Yeah. I got good we learned a couple of things, took a couple of little tips from Anthony's process. Yeah. Um, he probably took a couple of tips of mine, and okay. all he won't admit, the, well, probably won't admit it. Um, I'm going to expect to, um, I think what we should do as a follow up in June when I come to visit, just leave your desk alone. No. And we'll do a dedicated series, multi episode series of getting your desk dialed. No, this thing will be, it'll be, it'll be spotless. I won't, I won't shame myself in front of thousands of people. No, no, no. Leave it as is. Lock him out of his, his office. That's, like what's, gonna, that's what's gonna happen. They're just gonna keep, they're gonna keep me from coming into work Change a week the before. Lock. Yeah, yeah. Change the lock. I won't be able to come in, and then you're gonna get your content, and mm. I'm gonna have to disappear from the internet for a few months. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really disappointed in that. I hate to harp on it, but. I'm just being real here. I'm really disappointed. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, let's end this video. So yeah. guys, thank you so much for watching. This as, is my channel. No, I will close this video. As always, as always. Stay tuned for more crazy. Stay tuned for more crazy. And if you love this content, make sure to give us a big thumbs up, subscribe down below for more and stay tuned for more videos right here. At How many Garage. thumbs up do you think you've gotten from asking for that? None at the end of a video. Zero percent. You don't know that. Nobody. How knows. many subscribers said, oh, shoot. I didn't know that. I should subscribe. Probably, I mean, it's a friendly None. reminder, like your friendly neighborhood Anthony. It says, "Hey, man, just give us a thumbs up." I think that what you should do is, if you're going to ask for that, we should have the the person who does the best job at that. Have you ever watched? Um, I think it's it's like Black Art or something like that, uh, where he makes um, like big like uh, live oak tables and stuff. Oh, he does woodworking, okay. and he does a great job. He'll stop in the middle of the video and say, "Hey, if you've gotten value from this, you know, this is how I support, you know, the channel, my family, all that stuff. I really appreciate it." So he, he makes a, a, a use case, a reason for the subscribe, not just the lazy, "Hey, you should subscribe," because that is something that works. Okay. Well, then I will make sure to never do that ever again. Thanks, Matt, for all the helpful tips today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why even try? Make sure to like and subscribe. Smash the like button. I never say thing. smash. I never ever say that. I don't got that level of cheese. I say get that thumbs up. Subscribe mm. down below for more. And stay tuned mm. for more crazy obsessed garage. Whatever. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Thanks for watching. <laughs> See ya.